joined by colleagues from the Department of Public Works, <coughs> sorry, as well as um, the Portfolio Committee, I believe, of Public Works. Anela, can I check for apologies before we check who is present from the other department or committee? Uh, good morning, Chair. Uh, good morning to the honorable members and the guests. Jefferson, uh, we received apologies um, from the minister who um, is unable to attend the meeting today due to cabinet. And we also received uh, an apology from the deputy minister who attend today's meeting uh, due to other work commitments. Uh, from members, Chair, we received an apology from honorable Kahau. Uh, she's not feeling well today. Those are the apologies, Jefferson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anele. Colleagues, I would like to check um, if we have members from the Portfolio Committee on Public Works and Infrastructure with us. Okay, I see one hand is up. Um, Honorable Graham May, if you could just open your mic and uh, introduce yourself, please. Yes, good morning, um, Chairperson. Thank you very much for hosting us. I'm Samantha graham Maria, and I serve on the Portfolio Committee for Public Works and Infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honourable graham Maria. Uh, Honourable Hicklin. Good morning, Chair. Yes, my name is Madeleine Hicklin, and I too am from the Portfolio Committee on Public Works and Infrastructure. Thank you for hosting us. I appreciate it. Thank you, Honourable Hicklin. Um, I think this is Honourable Thring. Honourable Thring? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good morning and good morning, colleagues. Uh, and yes, I serve on the Portfolio Committee of PWI. Thank you so much for joining us. Honorable Van Skalkveig. A good morning, Chair, and good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Sharon Van Skalkveig, also serving on the uh, Portfolio Committee of Public Works and Infrastructure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Van Skalkveig. All right, at, at this point, I'd request for members from the Portfolio Committee on Higher Education. All right, there's another member. Um, the, the, the name and the, the name and the surname is all in one, uh, but there was a hand I just saw go up. If the member can introduce themselves. Hi, Chairperson. I think it's Suisa Matapello from um, our portfolio, so maybe she didn't realize you were referring to her. I did see her hand go up. Okay, Honorable Suisa. Okay, we'll come back to Honorable Suisa. Um, I'd like to then request for members of the Portfolio Committee on Higher Education to introduce themselves. I see Honorable King is on the platform. Honorable King. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Honorable King, um, and I'm part of the Higher Education Portfolio today. Thank you. Um, who else do I see? I see Honorable Lizie. Uh, good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, all honorable members from both committees, uh, Deputy Minister of uh, DPWI, uh, all colleagues on the platform, Democracy uh, Saving on Higher Education. Thank you, Honorable Litziem. I see Honorable um, Machesi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Nomsa Machesi. I'm the member of the portfolio. I serve on this uh, higher education portfolio. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Mukhale. Okay, I'll go back to Honorable Mukhale. Honorable Boshov. Thank you, Honorable Chair and uh, colleagues. My name is Vainan Bosov. I'm also a member of the Portfolio Committee for Higher Education, Science and Innovation. But I believe the science and innovation part is not so relevant today. Thank you, Chair. 
Thanks, Honorable Boshoff. Um, Honorable Mashati. Morning, Chair, and good morning to all colleagues from both departments. Um, Chair, my name is Dibulelo Maslazi. I'm a member of the Portfolio Committee on Higher Education. Thank you very much. And the web to the Portfolio Committee. Uh, thank, thank you, you Honorable Chair. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Honorable King forgot to say she's the Shadow Minister. Um, Honorable Sibia. Uh, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, I'm Tutuzile Sibia, member of Port Portfolio Committee on Higher Education. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to then believe that as all of us, if there's a member I've left out, um, I had spotted Honorable Mohale earlier on, but he wasn't able to open his mic yet. Um, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Honorable <clears throat> Morning, Honorable Mohale. If you can just introduce yourself. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Tapel Mohale, a member of the Portfolio Committee of Higher Education. Thank you. I also... <laughs> okay, thank you. Um... <laughs> I would also like to acknowledge the presence of the chair of the Portfolio Committee on Public Chair Works Person. and Infrastructure. Chair Person. Chair. Uh, yes, hi. Sorry for disruption. It's Honorable Jane Mananiso, member of the Portfolio Committee. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Honorable Mananiso. It's just, can we rename Honorable Mananiso's device? Uh, <clears throat> okay, I see Honorable Sibia. Honorable she did. Uh, she introduced uh, herself. Uh, I introduced oh. myself. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Um, having a bit of a slow morning. Sorry about that. Um, and then we see the chair of the Portfolio Committee on Public Works um, has joined us. Uh, Honorable Nolita Ntobongwana. Chair, if you can just also greet everyone, please. Thank you, um, Honorable Chair, Honorable Mukacha. Uh, greetings to everyone who is a member of the Portfolio Committee of Higher Education and, and um, my colleagues from the uh, Portfolio Committee of Public Works and Infrastructure. I've seen Honorable Graham, Mare, and Honorable Siwisa. Uh, not sure whether others have joined, but we have received the invitation and we definitely going to participate in the deliberations of today's meeting. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, at this stage, I would like to, uh, before I hand over to the Deputy Minister, um, who has um, who has been with us since the start of this meeting, just um, indicate why we, as the Portfolio Committee on Higher Education, felt it was important to um, have a meeting with the with the Department of Public Works. Honorable members, you would be aware that um, infrastructure plays a very critical role in ensuring the um, rollout of teaching and learning. Um, we need infrastructure for classrooms, for lecture halls, for workshops in the TBET program, for uh, for, for classrooms or lecture halls in the CET program. CET um, honorable members from uh, public works would be our um, community education and training program so that uh, would have been formally referred to as ABET. Uh, initially ABET or the CT program was within the Department of Basic Education but it was moved to higher education. Now um, the, one of the biggest challenges we have is that um, the program still exists within the infrastructure of DBE. So DBE hosts uh, the CET program. So we have uh, adults, um, you know, ranging from a uh, 16 year old all the way to a, I, I, I don't know, Tijiji Fuchani, I don't know if Tijiji Fuchani is on the platform or she is on the platform, but I, I don't know what your most senior student in the CET program would be, but, um, I, I don't think there's necessarily a bracket, right? So it's a it's a range of of adults, young adults, um, 
mature middle aged adults, mature adults. So um, having having the having the CT program or hosted within the DBE infrastructure um, cre- creates quite a bit of a complex. Uh, when you speak to the dignity of this person who is trying to um, upskill themselves and complete their matric and 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 so forth, so ideally, what we would want as 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 higher education, the department, um, but also with us as the committee supporting the department, is to have the CT program stand on its own, um, uh, and where we have infrastructure challenges in appreciating the fact that as a sector, we are a differentiated whole, we would then say, um, uh, um, you know, in certain cases, we could have a TVET uh, hosting the, the CT program. We could have a university hosting the CT program. But the, the, the difference in the CT program, uh, honorable members, between the CT program and, and a TVET and a university is that the CT program is all about ensuring that the centers um, are accessible so 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 the model of the school and it being you know everywhere in our communities means that when someone wants to you know complete their matric and upskill themselves in the in, in the most basic forms they don't have to go far they don't have to get on to um, multiple forms of transport they don't have to have a com- student accommodation in order to get this particular um, uh, support academic support, so so that's the beauty about having it in in our schools. Um, but but ideally, we would want to even look into having it in community centres. So so I guess key to the concern is how do we yes give the city program the dignity it requires, but still afford ensure that it's 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 accessible, right. Um, and that we don't exclude um, members of, of communities from this particular opportunity. Um, and also addressing the, the neat grouping and challenge that we have in our country. When we look at the TVED program, um, there are, Didi Chizungu, I see you on the platform, there is a need for us to expand in terms of, um, you know, support, infrastructure support for lecture halls uh, and for workshops. I mean, when we went to Islands and ETV at college, we know that some workshops were now being used as lecture halls. We know that there was a particular residence, a student residence of the college that um, firstly was just not in a state to be even, ut- well, it was not being utilized as a residence. But because of the pressures of infrastructure, so part of this, re- this residence was then turned into lecture halls. Um, and it's not even, in fact, it was not even suitable uh, for it to be used as a lecture hall. Now, there's clearly a need for, um, you know, support there in terms of infrastructure. And so if there are buildings of, of public works or, or, or uh, state buildings, public infrastructure that is not currently being utilized, it would be most beneficial for us as a country to ensure that we can repurpose this infrastructure. And we are saying as a department or as a committee, um, as the post-school education and training sector, that we would want this infrastructure infrastructure to support us in meeting the demand on infrastructure for teaching and learning in our sector. Um, when you look at the entire PSET system, student accommodation is a challenge. And that is where we would want, um, you know, infrastructure that's in and around these universities, uh, these TVET colleges to be repurposed for that. And so, um, and, 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 and the kind of information we want or we would like as a portfolio committee is to say, where is the infrastructure that is currently not being utilized? How far is it from our institutions? Can it be repurposed? And to also understand what the process is. So um, when, it, when the department comes and um, uh, uh, um, wants to you know, utilize the, 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 the infrastructure, what does the department have to do? Can a private citizen identify a particular building and want to, want to turn it into student accommodation to support the state um, in, 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 in matching the call by the president, Cyril Ramaphosa, for social compacting uh, amongst private and public sector in our country? How does that 
what processes would have to follow so that we can also go out as a portfolio committee and encourage citizens to assist us with this and say, no, if you were to want to assist us with this, taking into consideration that we even have the challenge of the exploitation of um, state funding by private accommodation where people want to charge exorbitant fees for student accommodation. And there's this intervention of a 45,000 rand cap, which is creating serious challenges for our sector. But I mean, if there are citizens who are saying, well, I don't, I have enough capital to refurbish. So if you have a way to lessen some of my costs, I could actually meet um, this 45,000 rand cap that, 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 that NASFAS and the department is putting to ensure that we don't exploit what is a social good. Any any education is a social good and any resource that seeks to support education is therefore also a social good. So student accommodation is a social good uh, and should not be exploited. So, so, so we, that's the kind of information that we would like to know and also get an understanding of what are the current existing relations between public works and higher education. On, 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 on numerous occasions, we, we as a committee have said, you know, we must reach out to public works to see how they can assist us with X, Y, and Z. I mean, there was a beautiful um, uh, incident that we witnessed in, um, or reality rather, that we witnessed at Seoul Blakey University when we went for our oversight last year in, in January, February, where there was a, a hall, a community hall that found itself on land that was now being um, allocated to the the, the university, to Soplaiki University. And um, the university repurposed this community hall um, for it to be used as a, a university hall. But what they then did not do is, is take the hall away from the community. So what we are told is that if members of the community want to use the hall um, for whatever purposes, they are allowed to still use the hall. So we took something from the community, we upgraded it, repurposed it, but still made it accessible to the community um, in also appreciating the idea of open learning and ensuring that our institutions of higher learning are not ivory towers within our communities. So there we've seen how, you know, a building that belongs to government was repurposed, um, but, but also still made accessible to, to the community. Um, so, so, so that's by and large what we, what we, um, where our interest is as, as a committee. And um, uh, really we want to strengthen, uh, if there are relations, uh, solid working relations between public works and, um, and, and higher education, we want those relations to be strengthened so that um, we also bring to existence the fact that we as a government should not be working in silos and we should be able to find innovative, sustainable um, means amongst our... So before we even want to social compact with <laughs> private sector, we must be able to social compact amongst ourselves. There must be synergy and cooperation amongst ourselves as a government. Before we go out to private sector and say, hey, come help us with these uh, infrastructure challenges. We must be able to look within ourselves to say what support can we give one another. So that's by and large what brings us to this meeting, uh, honorable members and colleagues. I'm sorry if I've taken some time. Um, at this point, I'd like to then welcome once again, uh, the Deputy Minister of Public Works. Um, and then, uh, and of course, uh, Ms. Notolo Kivet, um, and of course, also welcome her team. Uh, DM, you'll introduce, um, you know, if your DG has joined us, uh, I think you have an acting DG, uh, 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 Mr. Muemi, and uh, you'll introduce your, your team and take us through the presentation. Um, we do have colleagues from uh, the Department of Higher Education. I've seen DDG Fuchane. I saw DDG Zungu. Um, let me see who else I think we have. Yes, I think uh, from the top, from the executive um, leadership of the department, I think those are the two colleagues I'm seeing on the platform. Welcome, DM, and we are ready for your... Oh, I see uh, uh, DDG uh, Sokrikwa as well from the university program. So DDG Fuchane DM is responsible for the CT program. DDG Sokrikwa is responsible for the university program. And DDG Zungu is responsible for the TVET program. Um, 
I see Didi Zulu's hand has gone up DM. Let me take it uh, quickly before I hand over to you. Didi Zulu. Yeah. Uh, uh, greetings, honorable chair, honorable members. We also have, as part of the delegation from DH, Mr. Mlambo, uh, who is responsible, is the chief director responsible for infrastructure in, in our department. Thank you very much, uh, honorable chair. Thank you, Didi Zulu. Um, over to you, DM. Um, thank you, thank you, Honourable Chairperson, and a, a good morning to your good self, uh, to the Honourable Members of both uh, Portfolio Committees, uh, Public Works and Infrastructure, as well as Higher Education and Training. Um, and my, my Honourable Chairperson of uh, Public Works and Infrastructure, um, let let me also add in my greetings the acting DG uh, of uh, Public Works, uh, Dr. Alec Mwemi, as well as uh, his team and uh, the team from the higher education uh, department that you've just introduced, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, together with uh, all the support uh, staff, uh, that is uh, supporting our committees. Um, let me first uh, start by apologizing for a uh, minister who is in cabinet uh, this morning and um, indicate our um, appreciation for this invitation, Chairperson, because uh, it's, it, it's a welcome opportunity uh, for us to start uh, truly engaging in this um, uh, kind of conversation that, that should have uh, taken place some time ago. Um, understanding that uh, education is, is the most powerful weapon we can use to change uh, the world, uh, according to Madiba. And, and agreeing with that notion. Uh, and therefore the area of uh, student uh, accommodation, um, higher education uh, in general, and, and student accommodation uh, specifically, understanding the, the importance thereof that uh, it is through uh, provision of uh, student accommodation uh, that we would be making a critical contribution to improving the, the student performance uh, it, 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 educational. So uh, this area is, is very important for us uh, as, as the people of South Africa, um, but also understanding where we come from with education and, and therefore uh, the, the quality uh, and the status of our institutions. Um, and it is against that background uh, uh, that through uh, the pronounce, after the pronouncement of the pre president uh, around the issue of student accommodation, that uh, uh, through ISA, um, SIP 34, which is Strategic Infrastructure Project number 34, um, had been gazetted on the 24th of uh, July, 2020, with the special focus uh, to student accommodation, but also it, it contributes uh, very much so to the priorities of government, especially priority number two, as we know it. Um, and this area also um, links very well with economic uh, uh, development, um, especially in our challenges of job creation uh, currently with the high unemployment rates uh, and, and therefore whether we repurpose, whether we build, with any form of construction uh, does um, contribute to job creation. Uh, and therefore the, the, the reason why we say we welcome this uh, the initiation of this conversation is, is, is for that reason. 
and uh, through the linkages and uh, with and and the working the workings of ISA, having consulted, of course, with uh, the Department of Higher Education and Training, um, we we note that uh, this SIP SIP thirty four uh, talks to the number of beds that are required. Uh, by by the sector, uh, 300,000 by 2030. And currently we are working on that. The details are in the presentation. Uh, with the team, uh, the various uh, responsible DDGs are, are on the platform. From, from ISA, we already have uh, the Alvino Valshot Prince uh, who works on, on who works on the projects uh, and the program of uh, ISA. Uh, we have DDG uh, Mametsima Simula, who is um, it also heading um, ISA as the second in charge to uh, Professor Josionzo Ramahub. And with uh, our acting DG, uh, we have the responsible DDGs from the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. Um, we have um, DDG Sasa Suban, uh, who deals with our uh, properties and investments in, in our, for especially the, the, the issues of land. We I'm not sure if oh, we do have Nyeleti Makubele, who also had, uh, heads um, REMS, uh, which is our also properties um, with the real, uh, uh, real estate and uh, investment. Um, those are the two, well, it's two, two that I've seen uh, both from um, both from the department as well as from ISA. Um, I will hand over with your permission, Honorable Chairperson, because there is a presentation that has been uh, prepared and uh, we will take questions. And in that presentation, uh, it does uh, um, reflect on those TVET colleges who have made requests uh, for properties in the department. It, we, the, the details will be presented by the respective uh, DDGs. Um, I will hand over to Dr. Alec Muemi, who is now heading uh, the delegation from the administration so that they can then uh, share the presentation with the honorable members. Thank you, honorable chairperson. Thank you, DM. I trust uh, DG, you are taking over. Uh, thank you very much, uh, honorable chair. And uh, good morning to the Deputy Minister, the members of the uh, committees, uh, both uh, higher education, science and innovation, as well as uh, public works and infrastructure, and the colleagues from the two departments, as well as uh, parliament. Allow me, Chairperson, to indicate that uh, we have received the uh, request uh, and we had uh, taken notice of uh, the uh, packaging of the information in a manner that uh, would uh, be able to assist the committee uh, to respond to some of the key issues that Chair had uh, pointed out at the beginning of the meeting. And also to do indicate that uh, we, we are still in the process really of collating all the information that is being required and packaging it in that way. We have, uh, up until uh, yesterday, still been working on getting all of the relevant uh, and suitable uh, land parcels as well as uh, 
properties that are available on our immovable asset register that we can make available to the higher education portfolio for further expansion of the existing programs as well as what the chair initiated as a, a key catalyst for assisting the portfolio of higher education in terms of both provision of student accommodation and to facilitate learning and teaching at the post-secondary education uh, uh, needs. And in this regard, uh, one can also point out that the presentation is really in two parts. And uh, the chair had also indicated that in our responses and in the need for this engagement, we must also outline uh, the relationship and uh, what the chair uh, says, uh, a closer cooperation and uh, compact between ourselves and higher education in, in terms of complementarities that uh, as government we should promote. Uh, it's a matter we have listened to and we have taken to heart. My two colleagues, uh, both Mametsi Masemula from ISA and as well as uh, DDG Sasa Suban, uh, who is responsible for the real estate uh, investment solutions will uh, uh, present uh, the, our presentation on our behalf uh, in two parts and uh, each of them would cover and outline uh, some of the key issues the chair has uh, uh, put forward. Uh, I think in the first part of the presentation chair, as an outline, what we would uh, deal with is uh, the processes of student accommodation and the interventions uh, ISA has had and includes a cooperation that it has had with higher education in as far as the advancing this process is concerned. And in the second part of the presentation, we're looking at uh, the new opportunities and uh, the new uh, availability of uh, land as well as properties. We do recognize that uh, our processes uh, normally work on the basis of a receival of uh, needs and which needs assessments uh, are then undertaken, and uh, on the basis of those needs, we then look for compatibility uh, of uh, suitable properties and land for this purpose. However, in this context, and having seen what the committee had requested, uh, we are also looking at uh, provision of this information sort of in reverse, where we scour our own immovable asset register and uh, identify what we believe is suitable and uh, based on that, we then offer to higher education to say, would you be interested in any of this uh, available properties and land? And once they look at them and they're able to determine what uh, they think they can use them for, they submit their user requirements uh, to us. And we then follow our process of uh, determining the suitability of those user requirements vis-a-vis -vis either uh, a property or a land parcel uh, in this regard. And I think that that is what uh, we commit to providing additional uh, information over and above what is contained in the presentation. For starters, uh, we believe that now we have about 6,000 odd uh, land parcels uh, that we want to interest uh, higher education into having a right of first refusal, so to say. I must hasten to indicate that such a uh, a list is uh, not only available to higher education, but it's, uh, it's contested. There are other competing priorities, such as uh, land that is supposed to be availed for resettlement and human settlements. Uh, we are also looking at uh, land there for police stations, for courts, for other social needs as well, and uh, that we also release for other social objectives and economic imperatives. So consequently, it would help uh, if uh, our closer cooperation with uh, higher education, as the chair has outlined, is enhanced so that uh, the turnaround times are much more faster, that uh, we are able to assist each other in the identification of what is deemed to be suitable, more so if such land is already either adjacent or even closer or in close proximity of the existing higher education institutions and where the need for new ones uh, emerges that such land uh, that is available in the areas identified as such, according to the user needs of uh, higher education, that we facilitate the prioritization of availability of such uh, parcels. But like I said, we, we would, uh, as a proactive measure, 
uh, submit same uh, with the 6,000 land parcels. We will submit both to the committee as well as to our education by today. Uh, with respect to buildings uh, that exist, we will have to scour and look for the fact that none of them have any encumbrances on them or any of the, and they have not been spoken for or have not been pre-allocated uh, to other departments before so that we're able to provide that. For that, we believe that uh, with the time that was available before us, it was insufficient to be able to finish that work. We, we would need uh, at least a week chair to be able to finalize in the provision of same. And we believe that we can also on a proactive basis avail the, the same list uh, of available properties in this regard to respond uh, succinctly to uh, the desires of the chair that we are able to bridge this existing gap uh, in the market that has been identified and to aid uh, the students uh, in finding what is suitable and the institutions of higher learning as well to find what is suitable. With that, uh, and with your indulgence, I would want to invite my colleague, Manet Masemula, to start the first part of the presentation. And uh, if the chair agrees to move seamlessly, to then uh, Ms. Sasa Suban to proceed with the second part of the presentation. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, DG. You may continue. Uh, DG, if you may, um, DDG uh, Masimola is, is struggling with audio at the moment. Um, Chair, honorable members, if you allow me, I'll, I'll uh, take you through the presentation from, from Infrastructure South Africa, the Albino World's Conference, um, and, and then hand over to DDG uh, Sasa to, to continue. Honorable members, um, we from Infrastructure South Africa uh, side, we are mostly responsible for the SIP 28 Strategic Integrated uh, Program 34, which is the Student Housing Infrastructure Program. Um, in essence, what we are doing there is to, to monitor the program um, in terms of the Infrastructure Development Act, as is gazetted as um, previously uh, mentioned by Deputy Minister um, as well. So what we'll do is provide you an overview of the status of the program as where it is now. Um, our strategic um, integrated uh, project steering committee um, is also uh, the Department of Higher Education and Training is also part of the strategic integrated uh, uh, program steering committee and we usually request for quarterly reports um, on the status of the student accommodation. What I am presenting to you is the last update that we receive on student accommodation and um, I would invite even um, the, the department to come in to give any further updates um, related to the student accommodation as well. Uh, just overall, um, as mentioned by uh, Deputy Minister as well, um, the student bed target for 2030 is 300,000 uh, total number of beds, which is uh, in essence divided between the university and the TBIT colleges of 200,000 and 100,000 respectively. Um, it is um, divided into five phases for delivery, with phase one having 19,561 bids to be complete, uh, targeted, as and phase two looking at tw uh, 24,398. The date completed, we looked at uh, from phase one and two in terms of progress, there is 9,721 uh, total number of bids that we look at that we are um, tracking that's completed and with 5,840 that's in construction with a large number still in the uh, preparation phases or planning phases. Um, as you know there that the estimated total value for this program, we're looking at anything between 80 to 100 billion Rand. Uh, overall, as mentioned, this is the status of the phase one uh, projects, um, the total number of beds standing at 19,061 and I'll I'll go to the annex just soon, just to give you an indication of, some, of the status of, of the program. Uh, but as you know that even in this instance, the, the student accommodation from colleges to universities is uh, cuts across uh, or nationally uh, from the Western Cape um, straight up to Limpopo as well. Uh, the phase two projects in terms of the total number of bids 
uh, as mentioned, 24,896. A number of the bids also here is more in the planning stages or feasibility stages. Um, and um, you'll see that is, you'll see now when I go into the detail, um, the status of what is required and also what is required from the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure in this regard. And uh, DDG Sasso will give more detail. I just wanna maybe just go into uh, giving you an update on the, on the, on the projects itself. Um, in terms of phase one projects, you'll notice that on the, on the, on the status of the projects, a lot of the projects will, are, are either completed or construction is progressing well. Um, for example, the Northwest University, you have final works complete, um, completion was set for, for January 23 for the final blocks. And we expect the student to actually start occupying accommodation in February. Um, for uh, University of Fort Hay, construction was completed, for example, in March 2021, and it's already um, operating and the residence has already taken occupancy there. University of Limpopo is yet to commence with the planning for construction due to delays in the finalization of the implementing agent's appointment and council is yet to approve um, that one with, um, and then at the University of Western Cape, students are currently being admitted for occupation. Um, so phase one is, is progressing well with some hitches here and there, but overall the, the progress um, is quite well on the phase one program. Um, this is also part of the phase one program. You can see at Nelson Mandela uh, University, for example, the Georgia residence, um, 2000 number of bids for that university. And again, uh, a number, large number of progress being made with 800 bids completed in April, 2022, 680 bids completed in January, 2023, and only 312 bids are still in construction and 2% of the works remaining for completion by end of March, 23. Um, on the phase two, a lot of the projects or programs are still in um, the um, planning phases. In essence, um, when I say planning phases, the preparation work is, um, is mostly completed with feasibility studies completed and it's highly dependent on budget availability and capacity to complete uh, the, uh, the preparation work. Also, there is um, the, the, the issue of uh, coming through in terms of the servicing of debt in some instances and availability of funds as mentioned, and then council approvals uh, from the colleges or universities for the project to be executed. In some instances, there's also a requirement for the project awaiting ministerial approval for the project to go for uh, procurement. And this, um, you can see it cuts across all of the phase two projects where the feasibility study is completed. However, uh, some, in some instances, the council requires approval, minister um, approval to go for procurement is needed, or um, the issue of the servicing of debt and budget availability is, is the main concerns for it. Uh, just to mention that at the Northlink TVET College, for example, the feasibility study is completed and while it's pending uh, council approval, for example, um, the Wingfield land confirmation is, still re is required from, from DPWI and I know DDG Sasha will um, provide some details for on this one, as well as on uh, the Gertzibanda TVET College, uh, where there is also a, a need from, from the Department of Public Works. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. I'll hand over to um, DDG Sasa to, to continue. Um, Chairperson, honorable members, um, Honorable DM, um, DG, DGs and colleagues on the platform. I'm Sasa Subin, I head the Real Estate Investment Services Branch. Part of my program um, is to deal with the land reform program that cuts across um, social disposals as well for human settlements, restitution, redistribution, ESCOM, Sandra, et cetera. Um, we have a requ request and link to the presentation that has been done now for the student uh, housing, uh, sorry, for student infrastructure program, SIP 34, link to that at this particular stage. Uh, we're dealing with two requests that has been received from the Department of Higher Education uh, to, to, to support development. Um, the first uh, request um, has come through from Khatsabande, um, TVET College, and the second one uh, for Northlink College. We can just move forward. 
in terms of the um, Khat Sibanda Tibet College, um, we did receive a request already in September 2014. Um, the property uh, is recommended for disposal um, and we are just awaiting the final documentation from DHET. Um, we have been engaging and our last engagement was in July 2021. And I think that um, links uh, um, through to Alvino's presentation, um, the, we're waiting for uh, via DHE council approval, et cetera. We also require the development plans outlining uh, the required land size, uh, the extent of development, et cetera, so that we can process this release accordingly in terms of uh, national treasury requirements. Um, the next request we have received and also alluded to in the previous presentation is for North Link College. Um, uh, quite rightly indicated, the property is located within the Wingfield military base and is allocated to DOD. Um, obviously, because the property is within a base, um, there are security considerations, et cetera, that has to be, to be looked into. But these facilities were utilized uh, initially by Department of Defense as a college, and they were availed um, to um, the Northling College for use um, on a lease basis since 1984. So um, the request uh, has been received from DHET for um, uh, for 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 the for for usage, uh, but also for uh, capital expansion. Uh, of the college. Um, the, we've been engaging the Department of Defense so that we could then um, propagate and engage them to, to have an outright disposal because, um, you know, to, to, to have capital injection into a facility, it would be more feasible for one to have ownership. Um, but at this stage, the uh, Department of uh, Defense has declined that particular request, uh, but it seems that um, they, they, they're not averse to having a long, longer term lease. Uh, and this engagement between DOD, the Department of Public Works, um, that would have to be finalized to, to ensure that we get a longer term lease uh, or perhaps propose a subdivision um, in, in terms of uh, the extent uh, that is required and therefore the information that needs to come through from DHET on the extent of the, uh, the, the capital requirements would be imperative so that we could then start this uh, engagement and finalize that accordingly. And person also, um, historically, we have released land and uh, for the development of the Mapul Malanga University that has been successfully completed. And also in Kimberley, we've re released land for uh, the Saul Plykes University, and that happened in 2013. And we know that these uh, universities are now in, in place. And uh, as uh, my DG has indicated, we will continue to engage um, with, with the DHET and uh, link their requirements um, and their program accordingly to the uh, land parcels that we uh, and the buildings that we have available um, so that we could run this program accordingly. Chairperson, I'll pause there. Thank you. Thanks, colleagues. Uh, DM, would that, DG and DM, would that then be it from your side for now? Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Um, I, I, I take it that that's the end of the presentation. And um, what one can, can gather and uh, one can uh, comment on is that um, we do need a, one would say a further conversation especially in the area of uh, the, the CET, as, as you correctly raised uh, the concerns at the beginning of the meeting. But we also need probably from ourselves now uh, to engage with our counterparts, the, the, the public works provinces, 
uh, because some of the properties that would uh, help, uh, especially in, in for CETs, those that are more community-based, uh, you would find that the ownership thereof, uh, especially in rural areas, would be uh, provincial departments. We we need to to extend this uh, engagement to include uh, our provinces. Um, that that would just be the last addition I would make. Uh, thank you, Chair. Back to you. Thank you very much, DM, and to the team from Public Works. Um, can I notice that anything colleagues from DHEAD would like to say before I open up for members to engage? Did you Zoom? Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair, and, and greetings to the Honorable Deputy Minister and uh, all the esteemed members of the committee and the colleagues from the department. Uh, Honorable Chair, I think we, firstly, we appreciate this uh, and, and welcome the presentation uh, from Public Works Center. I think it does assist in a way uh, in, 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 in giving us the, the picture as to where we stand. I think uh, we, we have had some uh, engagements with the uh, Department of Public Works in relation to the properties uh, uh, that we are trying to acquire uh, for other repurposing uh, and utilizing either for accommodation purposes or maybe for teaching and learning uh, purposes. Uh, however, Chair, I think one of the other issues that we are grappling with as a department is around the ownership of some of the properties um, uh, where the in the main colleges are utilizing uh, for more than 30 years they've been occupying these properties but one of the biggest challenges on our chair is the fact that we don't have any proof uh, either of ownership of those properties or even lease agreements for those properties and then that creates a problem uh, for us even when it comes to the auditor general's findings i think most of these uh, uh, properties we we found that uh, what has led to qualified audit opinion one of the contributing factors has been around the issue of ppe or the property plant and equipment in colleges and in there is this issue of ownership of these properties um, we currently sitting with uh, 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 two colleges um, in pretoria Tswane north Tswane south uh, with a funded project by the Chinese government, but we are unable to move. I think for the past 10 years, uh, that project is not moving because of the issue of uh, ownership of those properties. And I think we might have to probably try and assist or engage uh, each other on that. We have requested colleges uh, to provide us the list of those properties that they cannot uh provide proof to auditor general that they either own or have lease agreements uh, that uh, allows them to utilize those properties and i think maybe this sitting is going to assist us to get closer in in resolving some of those issues i think uh, from our side uh, honorable chair honorable members that will be uh, the input uh, from 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 the tibet side and maybe my colleagues uh, from both the uh, university and city will also have some some inputs as well. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Didi Jizungu. Can I check with Didi Jifuchane? Thank you very much, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, the Honorable De Deputy Minister, uh, all the colleagues present in the in the meeting. Um, Honorable Chair, mine would be to say it is clear from the presentation that um, the, the community colleges are, are not yet featuring. And for us, this is a major challenge considering that 96% of our community colleges are operating from Department of, Pub, uh, Department of Basic Education, public schools. And in many of those instances, 
they are actually literally sharing the schools with the with the with, with the school learners, as earlier indicated by by the by the honourable chairperson. Now, in in my engagement, um, you know, since I've started in this portfolio with uh, with the college principals, they have indicated their frustration in relation to having made numerous requests to public works. And I think in this regard, it could be the provincial public works for the utilization of unoccupied schools. Fortunately, uh, or fortunately in the country, we have quite a few unoccupied schools as a result of the rationalization program of schools by the Department of Basic Education. What they've indicated is that in many instances, they have made those requests as soon as the school was unoccupied or shortly before the school was unoccupied, because they would get come to know about that as the schools are located in the communities and they themselves are in the community. But in, in many instances, the processes have taken so long such that uh, they are either not getting responses or even by the time the gator response, which could even be years later, that the school has already been vandalized by the by whoever, you know, the criminals, to such an extent that it no longer becomes occupiable. Uh, and I I I appreciate um the the remarks that were made earlier in the presentations to say that one of the things that will assist us uh, moving forward would be to get a list of available facilities that could be used by our by our community colleges and i would really appreciate from this meeting if i could also get a direction or that that will lead us in terms of assisting our centers to be able to make use of the available spaces that that are obviously owned by the Department of Public Works. And my final point, uh, uh, Chairperson, would be to say that we have now secured 1 billion rands uh, for the building of some of our centers for community colleges. We are going to start with one center per, per college. And one of the things that we are looking at would be land that is available, that is readily available, because we want to start with effects from 1st of April, the funds are available as we speak, with the, with the 1st of April, that, that we will be able to have land that is available, uh, where we can start to build some of our centers, but also that land ideally should be land with um, uh, infrastructure in terms of water and electricity, or we could even look at um, land where there is a school, but the school is is no is no longer operating, operating from that particular land. Time is of the essence, because what is happening now with treasury, as we all know, that uh, government resources are, are are very much constrained. That any delay, and we all know that infrastructure projects take long. Any delay uh, for us to be able to 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 implement this infrastructure program will mean that these resources will be removed uh, from the community colleges and taken to where they can be spent. The biggest challenge that we have at the moment is, is the lack of, um, of either buildings or land that are owned by the department because as per uh, treasury regulations, we cannot have infrastructure um, infrastructure commitment or developments that is not um, owned uh, on land that is not owned by the government. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, DDG Fuchane. DDG Sotrikwa. Thank you, Chair. Am I audible? Yes, Am I audible? You are. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, um, mine is really just to appreciate, uh, firstly, uh, good morning to you, Chair, and good morning to all the members and the Honourable DM. Mine is to appreciate um, the initiatives uh, um, introduced uh, by Public Works. I must say, though, that for the university sector, um, a Chair, uh, and I think a uh, commentary has been made during our, our oversight visits, um, it is best to uh, uh, access buildings that are closest to campus to reduce uh, traveling costs, but also to enhance uh, uh, security coverage. So the closer 
the buildings are to universities, the more attractive they are to universities. And we would certainly uh, wish to uh, encourage uh, conversations between our universities um, and, the, and the department, uh, should it be possible uh, to access some of the buildings, particularly those um, in the uh, metropoles. Um, if we can, th those would be the most attractive. And of course, Chair, uh, the other uh, 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 consideration for us is pricing. Um, from wh what I've seen in some of the proposals, um, uh, we've been seeing market-related uh, 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 pricing coming from public works uh, and uh, uh, struggling universities um, cannot access those buildings. Uh, and we do hope we can uh, uh, reach an arrangement where uh, we um, uh, agree to uh, principles um, in these uh, building or land exchanges uh, owned by public works. Thank you very much, Chair. And you're referring more to the student accommodation buildings, right? Uh, yes, Chair. Okay. Thank you, Didi Uh Mr. Mlambo? Mr. Mlambo, I don't know if you are still with us on the platform. Thank you. Yes, we got cut a little bit. Good morning, Chair, and good morning to the honorable members and Deputy Minister. I think the, the DDGs have covered me, but I think the important one, just to indicate on the student accommodation, I think the perspective that we would like to move towards is where in as much prioritize certain uh, PS institution for different phases as indicated. One might want to find out whether they are redundant or unused buildings located in the proximity of the either TVETs or universities, particularly in the, in the, in the, in the urban areas where that might be the case and we might be able to create some form of precinct for, for, <clears throat> for student accommodation. I think in looking at the, the schedule that uh, the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure will submit, that will be our forecast. Also, I think there is, as DDG Zoom has indicated, there is a, a, a concerted effort that we must move towards. And we've tried to, to get information. I think we've given the, the, the institution some time to develop into a, a schedule which we can share with public works also from our side on the uh, properties that they identified from the institution point of view so that we can be able to, to meet in between and identify whether those are owned by provincial departments or, or even national departments. There are issues related to Township schemes, I know particularly in, 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 in Basel Natal, where because of, of the, of the struggle, um, I, I think Elangen uh, in Pomalanga site is one of those. And, and I know University of Zulu that is struggling to, to obtain um, ownership of the, of the land just adjacent to the university. But I think basically it's, it's the issue of refining the issues of, of, of leases and ownership and some of the I think the issues of identifying uh, buildings or, or, or land closest to the universities for student accommodation to proceed. And, and, and on our side, as I say, we also trying to create a database of what has been uh, identified by the universities and TVETs and CETs in particular for us to, to share with public works and, and have a, a schedule with we can work with. I think the last one for me would be maybe uh, we will work towards uh, uh, re-establishing the, the, maybe a joint task team at, at functional level that will try and, and, and facilitate this communication so that we we are not here uh, in, a, in a year's time or in six months time and we continue to communicate uh, with, with the Department of Public Works and, and, and Infrastructure. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair and Honorable Members. Thank you, Mr. Mlambo, <clears throat> and thank you very much to all the DDGs.
Um, can I please note hands from members who would like to make inputs? And whilst I wait for those hands to go up, I will just say my fair share. I think it will be important. Well, let me start here. DM and DG of Public Works, I personally am disappointed with the presentation. And I think um, what uh, uh, Mr. Mlambo has just recommended is going to assist us. That we have, that, that I think there was some sort of task team that existed between the two or a working committee that existed between the two departments in the past. I think as a committee, it's important that we implore on both departments to revive that particular platform or structure. Because you see, um, part one of the presentation speaks to an existing program. It does not speak to um, spaces that could be used for student accommodation. So um, there would need to be an exercise between in this task team where you go and look at the demand. What is the demand for student accommodation in all our uh, institutions, TVET and, and, and universities? Uh, you understand the demand per institution per campus, and you match that with what is could be available to support that demand uh, across the country. Then, um, when we move to the CET program, there's been absolutely no inclusion of any discussions on the CETs. And where I think that it would be important for this platform, this uh, joint task team or whatever it was, to be uh, revived is because there is information from, from CETs of requests. Yet the same way that the Department of Public Works has been able to inform us of requests they've received from the TVETs, two TVETs, of which that, that information in itself is, is missing. Um, because I know of a TVET, Etlanzeni, TVET College in Pumalanga, where I had gone and done individual member oversight. And because the, the way in which we interact with our, our, our stakeholders as a committee is not only to hold them to account, but so we ask, what is it that we as a committee can advocate for that can assist you to fulfill your mandate? And one of the issues the, the, the principal there raised was that there was a building um, that they had tried to request from public works and there was no progress in that regard. So I already to your two uh, colleagues added which you have left out, uh, yet there is uh, there is information that, in fact, they, there has been a request for that, for assistance at that college. So that information is missing, um, which means we've started something, but we can't conclude it. So wh what informs that? Do we not have the data? Do we not have a system in place to ensure that we are able to track these requests? Because se seemingly there are other requests that we've not been able to account for. Now, that's where, again, I feel that this uh, task team or joint platform could really assist us. I'm going to move on to the CET. So we, we touch a bit on the TVETs, we give two institutions that have requested, and then we say nothing about the CETs. Yet we know that Eastern Cape uh, CET College has requested um, uh, infrastructure or buildings, 20 of them, and there's been no response in that regard. Western Cape uh, CET College has requested five. Uh, two have been accepted, three have been rejected. Gauteng has requested about 22, uh, and it seems as though there's been no response. Mpumalanga is said to have requested four, three have been accepted, one is still in process. KwaZulu Natal CET College uh, has requested 40, not responded to. Northern Cape requested seven, not responded to. Limpopo, uh, there's a high figure there, but, so it needs verification, uh, but it's said to be 143, not responded to. Free State, 12, there's been no progress. Northwest, three, two buildings have been accepted and one has, been res uh, has not been responded to. So there is information. So w w why we were not able to, well, I I'm trying to understand why, why doesn't Public Works have that information? Um, and so 
we need to make sure that we strengthen the partnership and relationship and coordination between the two departments so that you are both on par in terms of what the requests have been from the different colleges, be it CET, be it TVET, or even universities or, or, or TVET colleges on accommodation, so that we are able to be in sync in terms of um, uh, uh, the work that we are trying to do. So um, that is, I think, my concern at this point in time. Those cases that what we need is for the two departments to sit together, revive this platform that you have, consolidate the data that you have, because there might be requests that DHET knows about that the Public Works National maybe does not know about. So consolidate that information and those requests and see how we can best resolve them. I'm sure some of them are low-hanging fruits. They just need that last, I don't know, process to be followed. And then we can hand over that uh, building and teaching and learning can be supported. One of the biggest conversations that have taken place at the start of this academic year is the issue of space. Young people have been going to our institutions and we've been telling them that there's no space. Yes, on the one hand, we have a human resource capacity uh, uh, challenge that is also linked to funding. So we know as a sector, we need increased funding and we're hoping that the uh, MTT on, on, on a sustainable on sustainable student funding, which in my in my in my own thoughts or my view, it should not solely look into the funding of the student, but it should look at sustainable funding for the PSET system uh, to ensure access to education for the student and to ensure a sustainable PSET system. So, um, so there's a huge challenge, colleagues, on 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 space. Yes, one. Uh, attributing to human resource, but two, also attributing to infrastructural resource. Our lecture halls are just not able to take in the capacity uh, uh, or the numbers that we need. Our workshops also, our student accommodation, uh, uh, you know, there are cases now where students are being forced to uh, sleep on bunk beds so that we can address the issue of student accommodation. So let's let's really try our best colleagues to work together so that we are we are on par with one another. Um, I'd like to then take Honorable Lithier, Honorable Siwisa, Honorable Makesi, Honorable Graham Murray, Honorable King, Honorable Hicklin, Honorable Sibia, Honorable Mananiso. In that order, colleagues. Honorable Lithier. <laughs> Good morning, uh, Chairperson. Uh, I've already greeted everyone on the platform. Uh, again, my name is Temo Khodizi, a member of uh, the Portfolio Committee on Higher Education Science and Innovation. Um, uh, maybe let me, uh, first and foremost, agree with you that uh, the presentation itself uh, did not uh, respond to my expert expectations. Uh, I thought uh, would have uh, received a presentation in it uh, with Is it me or is it everybody? No, Honourable Grand Maria, I also can't hear anything. The speaker seems we to have be lost Honourable Lithier. I think it may happen his network. Um, can we take the next member and then we'll go back to Honourable Lithier? I think it was Honourable Siwisa. Okay, thank you, Chair. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, it's Honorable Mata Pelosurisa, uh, sitting in the Committee of Public Works. Chair, I've got only a few questions that I won't be long because I'm afraid that I'm also going to be kicked up. We just experienced load shedding. A feasibility study was completed and yet there's a delay 
for the minister to sign off. And it, it says to me that the issue of student accommodation is not a crisis to them. So they can take their own time to, to resolve the issue of, of, of student accommodation. So I don't know why the minister is still, still hasn't signed off even though the feasibility study has been completed. KZN, we've got a crisis of student accommodation, especially in rural areas where students are accommodated by people and the environment is not conducive or safe, where we've got cases of students being robbed in their rooms, being raped in their rooms. So what is the criteria of actually selecting people who accommodate students, especially people in the private ownership? In the 2015 to date, nothing has been concluded. What has transpired between 2015 and July 2021 if the process has been completed? Um, it's a pity the minister is not here today because I wanted to ask the minister. We have a crisis of student accommodation. And yesterday on SABC News, she had an interview to say that there's a possibility that she's going to ask the cabinet to get rid of some of the property that is in the custodianship of DPWI. But we are sitting with a problem. So we are going to, we have property because she's saying that she's selling this property because they can't maintain it. And we are sitting with a problem of student accommodation. So it's a pity that she's not here. Maybe the deputy minister can give us light on the issue of there is property that the department is willing to ask for approval of the cabinet to sell this property. And yet we have a crisis of student accommodation in South Africa. Some of these private owners that are out there, they are actually rising uh, prices of student accommodation. We know of those cases, and even you check, you've alluded to that, that they raise the prices of student accommodation. And we need to come up with a solution. Public workers has to come up with a solution as to how we are going to decrease the number of private accommodation from private ownership and make sure that all the property or all accommodation is being provided by the public works itself and not rely on private ownership to accommodate our students. Because some of them, they have to pay high prices. The place is not, is, is, it, 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 you, can't, you can't say the place is secure enough. I don't know what is the criteria of even selecting these people because they are robbing the, the government and the government is allowing this. The department is allowing this because if they can provide property to actually accommodate students, and we won't be dealing with people who, who are going to, to rob and give us prices that are crazy. The issue of Swan in North and South, that one of the DDGs has spoken about that it belongs to Chinese, but there is no production. And he says it's almost 10 years. What is Public Works doing about that to find out what is actually happening there? The one billion that has been, that is said is being allocated one cent up a college, why is the priority rural or urban? Even in urban, are, are the centers going to be done in such in, in an environment where there are already centers, or are they going to focus on areas where there are already no centers available? Those are my questions. I'll listen to the response chair and maybe do follow ups. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Sirisa. Can we go back to Honorable? Uh, chair, am I audible now? Uh, am I audible, Chair? You audible? We can hear you. Thank you very much. Uh, apologies, I got cut off. Uh, I don't know why. Um, but I was saying, Chair, um, and I'll close that part now by saying, uh, the the presentation really uh, did not do justice to what we would have wanted to get. Now let me go to what the acting uh, DG that the Alec Mwemi uh, would have alluded to um, in his opening after the deputy minister would have said that 
they, there was not enough time given to the department uh, to respond to respond to uh, specific uh, issues that we would have uh, listed uh, to them. Uh, and again, the chair, I, I don't know what does that mean uh, because. Uh, they received a, a letter uh, eight days ago. Um, and I don't, well, eight days before the portfolio committee today. So what, how much time really did the department do? Because I thought um, uh, they could have just uh, went to their records and uh, listed the properties that they had. Uh, that are not utilized or underutilized in specific uh, areas uh, that are not far from in our institutions of higher learning. Does this mean, uh, sorry, does this mean that uh, the Department of uh, Public Works uh, and Infrastructure does not have an asset register of all their buildings in South Africa? Uh, if so, uh, I'm interested to know what would have uh, uh, been an audit opinion of the AG on this particular matter. It's a picture, I don't see it in, the, in that uh, department uh, or in that portfolio committee and therefore may not be privy uh, to this information I'm asking you. But uh, for me, that's what it means. It means the department may not have an asset register of their own buildings. Uh, and if that is the case, then uh, we have problems. Um, we, have, uh, we have serious problems. Uh, maybe colleagues will assist us uh, as far as uh, this is concerned. On the presentation, uh, I can't remember if it's like two or, or three, where uh, the presentation states that the 2030 target of uh, student accommodation would have been 300,000 uh, beds uh, at the cost of uh, between 80 and, uh, and 100 billion, 300,000 beds. And this 300,000 beds, um, uh, it's not as if that budget is for 300, the target is 300,000 beds. So, uh, I would like them to break it down a little bit for us. Uh, uh, can they tell us uh, the, how do they arrive at this uh, at this cost? Uh, how much per bed uh, uh, have they, you know? Were they willing to pay in order to arrive at uh, at this estimate? And uh, is that in line with uh, a rent per square meter uh, according to the norms and standards? Or uh, because I, I would I do not want to believe that uh, they just put a, a figure there. I believe that uh, they would have worked out uh, thing. Uh, in order for them to arrive at that uh, at those figures, <clears throat> what are the challenges uh, with the repurpose repurposing infrastructure? Uh, is it cost implications? Uh, some bylaws. What, what are the challenges? Uh, and if uh, if there's a cost implications, can they? Can they tell us uh, what are those cost implications? Uh, if it's bylaws and all of that, can they tell us uh, how are they going to uh, mitigate against uh, such? Has there been uh, over and above what was reported here and all of that, has there been a, a infrastructure identified for repurposing? Um, uh, if so, which location and um, what is uh, what, what, how, what, what did they identify that repurposing for? Um, uh, 
and then obviously the legal implication uh, for for the repurposing uh, of this infrastructure in this aim. And then um, when I listened to both DPW and D had uh, DDGs who spoke here. Uh, I get a feeling okay, that there is no clear uh, modus operandi here. Uh, D had believes that they should uh, be told which buildings are there that they can. Uh, uh, be repurposed for student accommodation. DPWI uh, believes that uh, DHEAD must identify uh, buildings and then uh, approach them. Now that is where I think the problem is. We don't know who's supposed to do what, when, and how. Um, you know, you know, it's a problem. And I think. Uh, Chair, the, the one country, one plan uh, concept then comes to play here because without uh, such, we're going to continue having these problems where, uh, you know, we continue to have problems uh, of who uh, this uh, department A blaming department B and the uh, department B doing the same uh, to, to department A. Uh, this is what I'm going to suggest, and I'm, I'll be assuming that DPWI has a, an inventory list of all their buildings. Uh, that 18 DG, uh, you submit uh, the list of all your properties that you have that are either underutilized uh, or, or, or not utilized at all to the planning division of the Department of Higher Education, Science and Innovation, for them to identify uh, these challenges, uh, to identify the, the buildings for repurposing. Um, and I also don't understand why must a government, one government department lease uh, another uh, department's uh, uh, property or land. Uh, I just don't understand. Uh, uh, this arrangement, in, in our view, Chair, is holding uh, uh, South Africa's post-education and training uh, sector at Renzo because why must they be, why can't they transfer uh, that land or that building, whatever, to the department that would utilize uh, that land or that building uh, to the benefit of the same, of the country, which is uh, governed by the same, uh, you know, government. I, I just don't, that arrangement does not make sense. Maybe they must explain to us, maybe in legal terms, why must there be uh, such a thing? Uh, and I think uh, between DP, uh, Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, um, uh, Department of uh, Higher Education, Science and Innovation, uh, and maybe Chair must rob in provinces as well. I don't know, maybe we can bring in Department of uh, Infrastructure and provinces. Uh, they must also identify buildings that we can uh, uh, identify for repurposing, uh, bring them back to uh, uh, you know, be utilized better because some of uh, these buildings uh, are being hijacked on a daily basis uh, in inner cities. Um, uh, you know, uh, turned into uh, uh, places where really, I, I don't even know how to put it, but where really not so good things are happening there, where kidnapped people are kept, and all of that. Uh, so the Department of Public, Work, Public Works, if they don't know uh, where, uh, or they don't have a list of all their buildings, what state are they in, and all of that, uh, we're creating, we're creating such, uh, problems. And moving towards uh, the end, Chair, um, slide 15, um, 
you know, it's noted uh, that the uh, DPW, uh, DPWI, uh, that the request was received from Jihad uh, in September 2015, in that uh, standard 10, uh, ERF number 1025 for, uh, for Khartsibande. Uh, the property would have been recommended for disposal ever since uh, October 2015. Uh, however, uh, uh, DPWI says it's, they are still awaiting documents from DHEAD, uh, and their last engagement was in July 2021. You see, um, we have a problem again. Uh, uh, DHEAD, uh, 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 DDGs, that uh, uh, you have an opportunity to get uh, this uh, uh, tent for Khartsiban. And uh, from 2015, that's eight years uh, ago, eight years, but uh, it's it's just uh, it just doesn't make sense. Why would we uh, waste so much time uh, in just uh, making sure that we put paperwork in place to transfer this uh, send number from uh, DPWI to DHEAD? Eh? It's this thing, chairperson, of not having consequence management to underperforming uh, officials. And that must, uh, honestly, uh, I think this meeting must uh, uh, come out very strong against uh, underperforming officials, uh, like in this instant, you know? Uh, but I want to ask DPWI, what were the reasons provided by DHEAD for these delays in, in, in providing uh, the necessary documentation to yourselves for the disposal of this uh, requested property uh, of Karsibande. And what is it that the, the Department of DPWI did uh, when they realized that DHEAD, Department of uh, Higher Education and Training, is not uh, playing ball or coming to the party so that this thing is, uh, uh, this transaction is finalized? And uh, DHEAD must also explain uh, uh, on this issue, what is it that uh, uh, um, uh, they're supposed to do? And lastly, I think I just want to close by uh, by, by by suggesting that uh, um, uh, we must bring we must bring uh, uh, this discussion must not end uh, here. Uh, we must have another meeting. Hopefully, the minister of uh, uh, both ministers will be present. Um, uh, when we when we do that, we'll bring them back, bring provinces back, where now they're going to uh, present on uh, uh, these issues, uh, but with a list, an inventory list of, this is the building that we have in uh, the center of uh, Tswane, for an example. It is near University of Pretoria, five kilos to University of Pretoria, three kilos to TUT, uh, uh, 10 kilos to SMU and so forth. So it can be used by all of them, all of that. But they must do that with all the buildings they have uh, throughout the country uh, so that we're able to then map a way forward. Having said, these are the thousand buildings we have and uh, 100 land uh, that uh, uh, DPWI has uh, that uh, can be, um, you know, transferred to DHEAD. Uh, and then uh, uh, DHEAD can address the issue of student housing. I do not want to speak. I think a colleague there from the EFF covered me uh, 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 properly, Matabel, I think, uh, when um, uh, she spoke about, uh, you know, these uh, things that we're doing, uh, moving slow and doing these things uh, and that things. Uh, is creating an enabling environment for uh, greedy uh, business people uh, to take advantage of these young kids. And now they want to take advantage uh, of, of our government, something we must never uh, agree to. But it, it's going to happen as, as long as we have uh, these issues. Uh, you know, officials not transferring this and that, not sending documentations, getting excuse A and excuse B. It, it just cannot be, Chairperson. Uh, and I think uh, in, our, in that meeting, we must then look at uh, what are the consequence management uh, 
uh, that the department has put in place uh, one uh, to departments that do not follow the audit action plan to to officials uh, who are responsible from gathering this information and and and, and they've not uh, gathered it thank you very much thank you honorable Lizier. i think the next member is honorable machesi uh, thank you chair uh, and uh, again good morning to everyone uh, Chair, I think, uh, you know, I have been covered by most speakers, um, but I just would like to reiterate on the issue of, uh, you know, how disappointed we are about this presentation. Um, it actually shows that, you know, this kind of conversation is either it has never happened within the higher education uh, space, and, and I actually, I, I beg to differ with that. I, I, it, 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 the presentation says that you know, there has never been a discussion between higher education and and uh, the department, the DPW. Um, so it looks like we are starting from scratch, despite the fact that the government has a lot of uh, infrastructure backlog. Um, it looks like, you know, all we're thinking of is, you know, having buildings that are built from scratch, not utilizing what is already available. Uh, in terms of uh, rationalization, you know, um, I think DG Fuchuane uh, alluded to, to, to the fact that, um, you know, the, the, the buildings that are coming from there, from basic education, they're not being utilized. But what I think we have to ask uh, the Minister of uh, Basic Education is that how many of those schools that are readily available before we start, you know, uh, I know, you know, new money is always good because everybody wants to spend and, you know, before we go to spending the 1 billion rands, I think our, our, our homework would have been to ensure where do we need, how many schools are already available from that, uh, that policy of basic education? Because that's the first thing that, uh, that we should sub sit in first to say, what do we need based on what, we, what uh, Public Works has? And also I would like to find out um, who owns those buildings? Like for instance, if basic education had um, the, 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 those schools that have been closed, then do they fall into uh, the DPW, um, a register of properties or do they stay with basic education? And because I want to find out like, you know, who is responsible for the upkeep of those? Because now, as, as, as somebody has said, they've become heavens for crime and they can actually might as well be utilized by either, you know, TVET colleges and, uh, and also CET, particularly because, you know, those uh, schools, they are non-viable schools. They are usually farm schools. Uh, so they can actually you know, be there as um, as institutions that are used by rural area, uh, rural areas. So, uh, if you could just maybe find out from basic education, I know it's not it's, it's a question that maybe we need to submit to basic education or even invite basic education on this. And uh, and also, I want to find out who is actually responsible within the Department of Higher Education uh, on on on, uh, on infrastructure. Because like if we, we ourselves, we are not asking the right questions on a PW, um, a DPW uh, in terms of, you know, what is it that they have, what we can utilize. So what is this person doing that is responsible for infrastructure? And also, you know, talking to what the Honorable Sitia said, like, you know, the fact that, you know, there are delays coming from the Department of Higher Education is also disheartening. So it is officials that are really, you know, basically not doing their work, or maybe they don't understand the mandate that uh, they, they, are, they are hired for. Um, so I, 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 I'm, I'm a little bit, yeah, I'm, I have to say that I'm a little bit disappointed because we know that we have uh, CETs, uh, particularly, uh, they are not even listed, and they are the ones that are uh, in crisis when it comes to, 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 to infrastructure, more than universities, more than TVET colleges, but yet they're not part of, of this presentation. So um, I think like that is something, I think this should be an ongoing um, discussion that we are having uh, together with, uh, with, uh, with the Department of DPW to ensure that like, you know, at least there's communication because if you have 1 billion rands that is coming in uh, to go and utilize that, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Fishani, Digi Fishani, to go and utilize that on new buildings when there's already buildings that are existing. 
can we just maybe find out what is available, what is existing, and where can we spend this? And the one billion is not a lot of money, uh, to be honest. Um, I don't think it's going to really resolve our issues. But anyway, as it is, it's usually a, an ongoing process to to identify and also to to provide, you know, um, the infrastructure that is required. Um, but like maybe it's better to use that billion uh, rands to, um, you know. Um, you know, identify the the buildings that are already available, and and basically like you know um, uh, make make them more to be more appropriate to be used by CETs. Um, the other thing, uh, last question is like the the billion dollars, uh, the billion rands that um, Honorable Fuchan has mentioned on infrastructure. Uh, what should we expect from that? Because what we have seen in CETs, CETs they. I think we're showing our oversight. Uh, we saw that you know they will have one or two classrooms. Um, but we don't know the actual model that uh, CET uh, should look like in South Africa. You know, what model are we going to follow? Uh, like, you know, how many, um, like how many hectares should it uh, cover? Like, what, what do we have in mind? What, like, if somebody goes to a CET, uh, what should be? Are they going to be uniform in terms of the way they look? Are we going to take the same model as, uh, you know, the basic education when it comes to building of their schools uh, and what what facilities will they be offered? What kind of training are they gonna be offered? Uh, is it only, uh, do, are we gonna maybe focus on, um, on uh, you know, the, the in certain areas, are we just gonna be focusing on second chance uh, matriculants or we are gonna have a model that like, you know, encompasses uh, the, 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 you know, the skills that are required within that particular area. Uh, because I just want to have an understanding of what should be expected and how should that be. I know maybe on our future, might not be able to respond now on that. I don't know if they've already thought about that, but it is something that uh, maybe we should, uh, we should be given, you know, a uh, preview on like, you know, what we should expect and what is this billion drains uh, assigned to do? Well, exactly, is it building from scratch? Is it remodeling of, uh, of infrastructure that is already there? Or is it just the resources that are gonna be provided? Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Makesi. Honorable Graham Murray. Thank you so much, Chairperson, and I really appreciate the opportunity to speak in this meeting. Um, it's always it's interesting joining a different portfolio committee because I think every portfolio committee has their own um, acronyms and shorthand that they speak. So um, sometimes I'm not entirely sure what you what you guys are talking about. Um, so I'm going to start off. I think a CET. I'm assuming that a CET is a community college, um, and um, I think I agree to some extent with with Honourable Mochesi in that. Um, Maybe what we should be looking at, as opposed to, to sort of reinventing the wheel, is there are a lot of schools, particularly in smaller towns and areas. Um, can I just ask, Honorable Machesi, you haven't muted, um, just, just as, a, as a reminder. Um, you know, there, 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 are, there are a lot of schools in, in, in poorer areas uh, that lack the um, funding and the resources to keep their schools properly maintained um, and in a good condition. And it might not be a bad idea that if, if that money is then utilized and the money that's been allocated for the CETs is utilized to upgrade schools um, so that there's shared costs and shared services um, and that the school and both the CET are then not spending as much money as they would ordinarily do and you are managing to keep schools maintained um, along with the CET. So that's just a suggestion because one of my questions is, is that how much engagement is being done with local government um, in the development and building of the student accommodation? Uh, one of the problems we have, particularly in um, say drought areas or areas that are constrained with water provisioning, if you look at Nelson Mandela Bay, I mean, they're in the midst of a drought, um, they're building 200, you know, 2,000 beds there, but has anybody looked at the fact that water provisioning is an issue? So um, how much engagement is being done with local government when you are looking at the feasibility studies and you're looking at establishing student accommodation um, projects in those areas? That being said, if you look at a town like Croft Renet, where I live, we have a fantastic new TVET college that was opened, I think, a year or two ago. Um, it does it does fantastic short courses. Accommodation is an issue, but we have a huge number of public works houses 
um, well, not a huge number, but there, there are a large number of public works houses, a lot of which are now empty and are being vandalized. Would it not be a good idea to establish, particularly for short-term courses, um, houses where three or four students can share um, and live in a house as opposed to building, you know, big dormitories or other student uh, um, accommodation. So that's also an option where you can create um, little uh, houses that people can can utilize as opposed to, you know, to dorms. Um, I hope I'm making sense. Um, and then one of the other problems um, that needs to be looked at is, for example, at NMU, um, the students have been striking because of NISFAS, but what they did was they then shut down the construction site where their um, student accommodation is being is being built. So we can't also then have students interfering um, and delaying student accommodation um, sites where uh, the accommodation has nothing to do with what the issue is. Um, and then the other thing is, is that um, with the new builds that are happening around um, student um, housing and even the re repair, refurbishment and um, um, repurposing of buildings, is the DHET and is um, DPWI, are they speaking about the greening of these buildings? In other words, are we looking at rainwater um, collections? Um, you know, that that they're um, load shedding free, etc. cetera, um, especially for students who, who require uh, the reception is very bad. Okay, I thought it was live. Thanks, members. I thought it was my network, so I didn't say anything. Um, Honorable Graham Murray. Okay, she's been kicked out, I think. Let's take Honorable Hicklin. Thank you so much, Chair. I think Honorable King was before me. Um, I don't know if you want me to continue or if you want me to give over to Honorable King. Thank you. Let's go to Honorable King first. I think um, I think because of load shedding, we all could get we keep getting kicked out. So then our number uh, changes when, as we log back in. So let's take Honorable King. Thank you, Honorable Hicklin. Uh, okay. Good morning, everyone, um, and also to the Department of Public Works colleagues. Um, Chairperson, in terms of the presentation, I have largely been covered um, in relation to the content that would have been ava uh, readily available, but unfortunately, we have not received it. So I'm not going to dwell on that. So, Chair, in 2020, specifically in June, there was a meeting um, or with regard to the SHIP program um, to the Portfolio Committee of Higher Education. And it was mentioned that there were challenges with regards to the title deeds, rezoning and land claim of rural campuses. Um, there were uncoordinated sequencing of funding that causes project delay. Uh, there were quite others also mentioned. I just wanted to find out uh, when you consider that, um, how far are they, especially with local municipalities, in order to ensure that the issue of title deeds um, and rezoning um, is looked at? Um, I do know the issue of land uh, claims might be an issue because also of people that might have laid claims on a particular land where an institution is now harvested. So those are the issues that I just needed to get proper clarity on um, in terms of DPWI, has that been resolved? Um, also, Chairperson, doing some research, I've noticed that the EU, um, through its Infrastructure Investment Program and the um, DBSA, has made considerable um, investments with regard to student housing. If we can just get in a an update or clarity specifically to which institutions um, those were made. And also, well, are there any discussions on the table where the CETs will also then be incorporated in the foreign investments made into student housing in South Africa? Um, 
A lot has been said by the Minister Blade and Zimande when it comes to student accommodation, highlighting that there are 11 universities that will be receiving um, close to, um, I see, 7.5 billion rand, uh, and 2.9 will then be made available for student accommodation. Um, with the slow pace at which the SHIP program is going, um, I'm, must raise, I'm a bit concerned if we will be able to reach the 200,000 rand mark um, bed accommodation for universities and the 100,000 rand, 100,000 bed accommodation for TVET colleges by the year 2023. And it is not also going to be helpful when NESFAS um, is also now on board when it comes to regulating accommodation for public institutions, um, because we will see that the minimum norms and standards for student accommodation specifically says public and not private institution. So my concern is chairperson when a department like DPW do not even have um, knowledge or clear understanding of their own asset management and also it raises concern of how accurately they do understand their immovable asset disposal policy um, with regards to what we thought this presentation today would have been in terms of where exactly um, do we have capacity, where exactly um, do we have challenges when it comes to local and provincial governments um, to ensure that we have property that can be made available for um, the PSA sectors, specifically the CETs, when it comes to the school rationalization policy. Um, I have been largely covered, Chair, so I will not go through most of the stuff. Oh, the last one, I just wanted to find out, we have not received the time frame that it should take from planning phase the completion phase for a project um, and on most of the projects that they have outstanding um, how long is are they still sitting in the planning phase um, and how long will it then take for it to reach the completion stage of infrastructure projects thank you chair thank you honorable king honorable graham murray no, it's Honourable Hicklin now. Thank you so much, Chair. Sorry, Honourable um, Hicklin. Sorry about that. No problem, Chair. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, those colleagues of mine in the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure know that I have two hobby horses, but unfortunately they have very great relevance in this meeting. One is the Immovable Asset Register and its application in the disposal of land parcels and buildings for processes exactly like this, which is student accommodation, community education and training, and the other one being uh, South Africa's greatest secret, which is Agrimar SA, which promotes innovative building technologies. So I'm going to look at very briefly the first one, which is um, the Immovable Asset Register. And we have a thing called the Government Immovable Asset Register Act, which determines that a thing called a UM, which is a user asset management plan, has to be devised between the client, which in this case would be the Department of Higher Education, Science and Technology, and the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure where the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure has to ask the Department of Higher Education, Science and Technology what your exact requirements are in order to plan how best we can assist you. And that has to be in a user asset management plan. And from what I'm hearing, such a UM has not been done comprehensively, or if it has been done, it's not being implemented correctly. Because for part of that UM means that there is extensive communication that takes place between the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure and the Department of Higher Education, Science and Technology. And from this presentation that was done by the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, regular communication has not happened. And that was very, very clear in the second last slide 
relating to the Khatsibanda issue where the last communication happened in July 2021. It's not possible that regular communication has happened if the last communication was over a year ago. And I'm highlighting that because if a UAMP is conducted, these kind of snags would be avoided. And I'm highlighting it to the benefit of the Department of Education, uh, Higher Education, Science and Technology, and for the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, so that we, as the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, make it a standard practice that UAMPs are done all the time to avoid this kind of back and forth to the detriment of both departments. When one is looking at new builds, when one is looking at a land parcel acquisition in order to build an infrastructure through ISA, through the Department, uh, the Infrastructure South Africa, one has to look at Agrimar SA. Agrimar SA is a certification agency or a certification arm of the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure that looks at innovative building technology. And DM Kivit knows that it's my pet project and I, it's the part of DPWI that I love the most because it showcases innovative building technologies. Honorable Grammarie actually looked at this when one looks at student accommodation where you need access to um, constant uh, internet access and uh, lots of internet technology. Agrimar SA has that kind of technology. That is the kind of technology that needs to be employed in new buildings, potentially um, in innovative refurbs. And that is the kind of information that needs to be made available to the Department of Higher Education, Science and Technology for implementation in the refurbs. And that's the kind of thing, that is the kind of transverse link that I was talking to in the stakeholder engagement that we had on Friday with the Agrimar um, SA when we went up to Johannesburg. I'm just going to leave it there, but I am more than happy to make uh, the, uh, the contact details available to, for Agrimar SA, although I don't need to do it, uh, DM Kivit can make that available to you, but it must be incorporated in the in in the conversation between DPWI and Department of Higher Education, so that can be incorporated in your dealings going forward. I leave it there and thank you again so much for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you very much, Honourable Hicklin. I'd like to now take Honourable Mananiso. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. And let me welcome the presentation and as well uh, pass my greetings to the Deputy Minister. Uh, Chair, I think in most of the issues I've been covered by your remarks and the inputs by Honorable Litsi. However, one would want to ex as well appreciate the fact that uh, what you do in terms of having this meeting with other departments, it really shows that you really understand that the PSAT sector is a cost-cutting department and mainstreaming it is important on a daily basis. So I'm very happy that, uh, you know, you're trying to strengthen and enforce this thing that as department, we must not work in silos. And uh, it's very acknowledged by myself. However, Chair, I think I want to ask a question for the department to answer with regards to student housing project uh, that they have uh, that we got a presentation on. I just want to check uh, for those that are waiting ministerial approval. Do they have a specific time frames in terms of uh, when will that thing, uh, well will that particular approvals being executed? Because I, I think we we are noting that this is a concern that uh, many things are left unattended or there's a slow pace in terms of uh, responding to them uh, soonest. So I just want to check that. 
I'm um, as well covered on the issue of uh, the database of all the uh, spaces that we have that are available by the Department of Public Works that can be used for repurpose. I think it is important that we get that particular list and as well get an update in terms of which ones have been identified for repurposing and as well noting uh, whatever that honorable uh, much as you could have said in terms of what is it for? Is it for a, a renovation or to be started up to scratch in terms of development? So it is important. And that particular list must have a, a specific time frames in terms of the execution of the plan of those particular processes. Uh, it, it will be important for us so that we do our oversight and accountability. Chair, I'm, I'm very impressed as well by the uh, remarks from uh, Mr. Zungu and Mema Fuchani in terms of what they have said with regards to property list that belongs to the department and as well what is available. I, I think we need to get that so that we can be able to see how can we advise in future so that everything should be done in speed. And I'm happy, Chairperson, that now as the peace sector, we, we, we actually acknowledging the fact that we are backfooted in terms of responding to issues of CETs. And uh, I, I, I am happy that everybody now is starting to note that, you know what, see, it is, uh, we must be given the necessary attention it deserves. And I, I think I would want to uh, applaud the department by ensuring that there's one billion uh, funding that it's actually allocated for, for CETs. However, one would want to advise to Mema Fuchan to say uh, when uh, these particular plans are, are, are being uh, rolled out, can the department not bite too much of what they cannot chew? Uh, can they give us a, a spreadsheet on specifics in terms of those areas that have been uh, targeted or identified as, as, as starting pilots? so that we are able to check whether uh, whatever that they are coming up with, it's realistic and, and measurable. So that's it from, from, from me, Chairperson. And I hope that you'll be bringing more departments so that at least from the planning phase to uh, 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 implementing to monitoring and evaluation, we'll take each other along in this particular development for our transformational agenda. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mananiso. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Yeah, it's uh, well, we're expecting something uh, better than we had received today, uh, which is more detailed in terms of uh, what we're dealing with here. Because is it my network? Yeah, okay. No, it's gone. Here's network. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think your mic is... Can you hear me, Chair? Can you hear me, Chair? Yes. The last thing we heard you say was that you are disappointed. <laughs> okay, Chair. That's it. No, it's fine. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed with uh, the presentation. I thought it would have... Uh, Covered all the details that uh, we had expected uh, of them. Uh, hopefully, maybe they will work on it and then uh, give us a proper presentation next time. But there are a number of things that uh, I want to raise with you. Some of them have been covered by my uh, colleague, uh, Commissioner Matapen. Uh, that, you know, part of the crisis that we are having here, uh, Chairperson, is especially when it comes to this uh, issue of uh, student accommodation, is that we have become very heavily reliant on the private sector to provide uh, this uh, student accommodation. And uh, given the current situations that we're experiencing now with the collusion that is taking place and the inflation of prices, uh, 
by this uh, private uh, accommodation uh, uh, people. We would not be here, Chairperson, if the Department of Public Works was doing its job. We would not be here. Because I can tell you, there's a lot of buildings here. I will use, uh, for example, Tswan. There's a lot of uh, buildings here in Tswan which uh, belong to public works, even houses. Because here, if you come here in Pretoria West, yeah, uh, the city of Tswane says they don't own those houses. The Houghton Provincial Government says they don't own those houses. And I'm sure even uh, public works, those are government houses, are not privately owned. But they will not uh, be able to account for that. So we have a problem here, uh, <clears throat> Chairperson, that the Department of Public Works, they don't own, they don't owe, they don't know what is in their uh, 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 register. Secondly, they are not working together with us to ensure that we utilize some of these properties that they are supposedly owning to deal with the problem of student uh, accommodation. Because we, we shouldn't be here, Jefferson, we, with, with the, uh, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, uh, property for portfolio that is sitting with the department. We shouldn't be having this crisis now. I mean, you talk about Pretoria University, that those uh, private accommodation uh, uh, providers are inflating uh, the prices there around that area of Hatfield and so on. There are buildings, there are houses there, which some of them, they are owned by the department and are around there. But they don't know about them. The people who know about them, Chair, they have exploited uh, that situation and they are using those houses for nefarious activities. You can come in there, we'll take you there. We, we, we can, we'll take you there, we'll show you that these houses, they are owned by the state. But public works can't account for them. But I believe part of the problem is that there's entrenched corruption maybe in that department. That some of these officials, they might be ensuring that these buildings remain like that so that they go and collect those monies. They put tenants, they put whoever there, they go collect those monies there. So that might be another possibility uh, in this uh, uh, issue, uh, Chairperson. But we, 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 we shouldn't be having a crisis of student accommodation if public works was working together with uh, higher education to resolve this problem, we, we wouldn't be sitting here at uh, Chairperson. So it is purely the fault of uh, public works that we are here. I blame the, the Department of Public Works. And, and the other issue, uh, Chairperson, uh, I think maybe in the next... Uh, Next time, maybe if we get an opportunity to deal with this, let's bring the the metros. Let's bring the 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 uh, maybe the municipalities, particularly the metros, because that's where I think we are encountering uh, some of the biggest challenges in terms of accommodation, like cities like Johannesburg, Cape Town, Deben, and so on. That's where the crisis is, as well. So let's 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 bring municipalities because. Uh, there are there are municipal buildings which which are also not being utilized by municipalities, which can be repurposed and be used for the provision of uh, uh, accommodation for our students. So I think it will be prudent or advisable uh, next time to also rope in uh, the municipalities in this regard, so that they assist us, so that we don't have a situation where. They are government old buildings, whether by the province or by the national government or by the municipalities. They are sitting there for years. They are derelict. They are dysfunctional. They have even been hijacked by criminals. And we have a crisis of student accommodation. It shouldn't be a uh, chairperson. That shouldn't be the case. Unless if there are people who are invested in this thing of uh, 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 providing uh, 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 this. Uh, accommodation, who don't want the state to enter into that particular space and be able to uh, uh, assist the, 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 the students. If that's the case, then it means it's captured. The department is captured to advance narrow 
uh, 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 interests which are against the broader good here. So I think that's that that's a proposal for uh, the next time we have this kind of uh, uh, session, Chairperson. Let's bring in the municipalities. And lastly, I just want to bring a matter to your attention, Chair, which is uh, happening there in uh, Sol Plaki University, which was brought to my attention recently. Uh, that there's a case of one of the people who was providing uh, accommodation to the university a while back, who was disqualified and was told that they need to uh, comply with certain issues. Then after they have sorted those issues, then they will be br uh, brought back in line. Uh, since this person was disqualified, the university went on to acquire a new service providers. And these ones, chairperson, that the university has, has, has acquired, their buildings are currently being renovated with students being inside. There's construction taking place, but students are inside. So how do you explain that? So I would like, uh, chairperson, that uh, this matter uh, be dealt with uh, speedily so that we, we are able to get down to exactly what is the issue there? Because there's, I can tell you, there's a lot of corruption in that space. A, a lot of corruption in that space, Chair. If we can uh, just put our eyes on it, we'll uncover a lot of corruption when it comes to these people who are uh, uh, providing private accommodation, working together with some of, of the officials uh, within the, these universities. So... Uh, Chairperson, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mohale. Mam Sibia? Thanks, thanks, Chairperson. Greetings to everyone. And uh, thanks for your presentation. Uh, Chairperson, uh, most of the issues are covered by previous um, honorable members. But on the student accommodation, uh, I'm not clear if the request is, uh, if the response of the request is saying it has been objected. I'm not clear who, who the reason for, of that, for that objection. If they can explain, get a, uh, they, we can get more explanation on that why the, the requests are being objected. I think most of the issues are covered. Thank you, Honorable Sibia. Um, I think our last member is then Honorable Montuid. Uh, very good morning to you, Chair, and all members of the committee, very good morning. <clears throat> Chair, I think the previous speakers have already taken most of the issues that I wanted to raise, but I just want to speak on the issues that Honorable Suisa raised around the conditions of students' accommodation, especially in your areas of KZN. It's not only unique to KZN, it's in most areas of the country where the student accommodation. And I think the challenge there is because the, uh, I think university tends to compromise the quality of student accommodation uh, because of wanting to maybe make savings or something along those lines. Maybe one may just ask the department to say, how do they determine the rental amount to be paid per student to this private accommodation? And also, are there any levies or administration fees that landlords must pay to the universities because they also do create some of these problems. And then the other one would just be that, how often do do the department audit these trenches that they take to universities so that they see if indeed is there value for money in terms of money that has been taken to university. Now, the last thing on my side is only on the issue of the role played by the Department of Public Works to say, there's, a, there's this process of accrediting student accommodation. And I think public works do have the expertise with regard to that function. Uh, what role does public works play to, to as far as uh, accrediting of student accommodation? Or they leave this solely to the uh, 
officials in universities who then tend to uh, actually just you know do things that they actually don't know what is it that they're doing. Uh, that is that for me, not much. Dr. Uh, Tapelo and all other members actually took what I wanted to make a submission of. Thanks very much, Chairperson, for the opportunity. Thank you, Honorable Montez. Thank you very much to all members of uh, of both committees. Um, thank you so much for your comments, questions, recommendations. I'd like to believe that we have all been afforded an opportunity to make our remarks. Um, colleagues, I think what's what's coming up coming out strongly from members is that one, they would have expected to have heard more from our presentation this morning. Um, members are calling for an immediate uh, 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 engagement between the two departments for you to find one another. There have also been recommendations made on strengthening your inventory. In fact, there's a question to say, do you have an asset inventory? Are we able to account for all uh, the buildings that belong to, to, the, to, to the government, to state? Um, and there's been recommendations from members or requests from members on how we should best package this information. I think what I also alluded to earlier on was to explain to us the process, you know, because we in higher education don't know what the process is when, you know, a, a particular uh, uh, public um, building must be, well, is requested by another government department. We don't know the process. I even further said, we don't even know the, the process if a citizen were to want to um, um, assist with this challenge that we have on student accommodation, you know. Um, so so um, we need that information so that what Honorable Litsia said, for a, uh, who, we don't even know who's responsible for what and how exactly is the, what is the modus operandi, another member I think referred to a modus operandi between the two departments. Um, so, so there's those issues as well. The members have spoken a lot about the importance of addressing this need, either by enunciating the importance for uh, the support of, of, of teaching and learning or infrastructure for teaching and learning, and coming up with various innovative ways on how um, um, the sector at large and how government at large can support uh, um, one another in this instance. Members have spoken a lot about the risks that currently exist on student accommodation, you know, the exploitation uh, and so on and so forth, and even making examples of opportunities that are there that are now being um, uh, abused by people who are just taking illegal occupation of these spaces, right? So so there's a lot that members have spoken to. There's been suggestions around not only increasing stakeholder engagement between the two departments, but even roving in your local municipalities, which could be done through SALGA, which could be done by COCTA. Members have spoken to the importance of ensuring that the provincial departments um, of public works are also involved. Members have raised concerns on doing what needs to be done. So the one hand, others must have the inventory, they must respond to requests, they must um, uh, 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 you know, be accessible. On the other hand, when the documents are requested, colleagues, we must submit those documents, right? And where we, where, 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 uh, you know, the, the biggest challenge I have with NASFAS is that we don't close issues. We don't close issues. You'll ask a, a student will come to you and say, NASFAS hasn't done X, Y, and Z. You go to NASFAS, NASFAS says the student didn't submit X, Y, and Z. Okay, but then let's close the matter because then it becomes a back and forth, back and forth. Close the matter, resolve the matter. Take initiative to make sure that we are able to close the case and that matters don't linger for 10 years. It's unacceptable. And quite frankly, we don't have the time in terms of the need for us to develop our country and address the needs of unemployment, inequality, and poverty, we don't have that. We are out of time, colleagues. We have to be on our toes now when we do our work. We must have our finger on the pulse of the needs of citizens of this country. So um, th that's by and large what's coming forth. Um, there are questions that have been 
posed uh, to yourselves as the Department of Public Works, as well as higher education. Um, I'm going to hand over to Honorable Itzie to chair this part of the meeting um, to take you through um, uh, those needs. There'll definitely be a need for us after the departments have met, there will be a need for us as a committee to get uh, an update, um, you know, stemming from uh, the work that you would have done as the two. And of course, we've spoken to um, the reinstating or revival of the, the platform, uh, the, the, the joint working committee platform of the two departments. Um, Didi Jizungu wrote in the chat that, you know, repurposing infrastructure could also afford us an opportunity for work integrated learning for our students in the TVET space. That's absolutely correct. Um, you know, we have a challenge of students not being able to get placement for work integrated learning. But if we as government are working amongst ourselves in create in 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 creating work that must be done, uh, you know, we, we 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 can provide our students with that opportunity as well. So thank you um, very much, honorable members and colleagues. I will now hand over, perhaps let's start with, um, uh, let's start with the, the Department of, of Higher Education. Or, uh, in fact, let's start with the Department of Public Works. So DM, I'm gonna hand over to you and your DG, and then you'll take responses, but honorable Lizier will continue to chair the meeting um, from now. Thank you, over to you DM. Uh, thank you, thank you, um, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, let, let me appreciate the inputs uh, to questions and comments from the Honorable Members, uh, as well as um, officials from uh, DHET, because they, they make one uh, to see issues even much uh, clearer. Uh, there are areas, Chair, that um, uh, I think as we were engaging, we would have uh, uh, already answered, but which may probably require some further uh, processing. Um, one that comes to mind straight away is the the, the, the community uh, education uh, sector, which we have not really uh, what focused on much. And listening to the comments from the honorable members uh, and uh, as well as the questions, it is becoming clear to me that in that space, we do need our provincial departments coming in because uh, the process of the schools that we would have closed, basic education schools, normally um, when a school closes, the two departments, that is department of basic education in that province, uh, together with the department of public works, hand over each to each other the, the ownership of the transfer the ownership of that school now in some cases this does not happen and and this is where i'm saying we then need to uh, involve our provinces in this in this discussion and this debate because Ordinarily then those unused business um, buildings, which would have been schools, would be under the custodianship of Department of Public Works in a particular province uh, for that province to um, see alternatively how to use, utilize the building. And, and it is that it is against that background that I suggest that we um, fortunately are going to have our own as public works, uh, MINMEC soon. Uh, we probably must uh, itemize this particular area so as to ensure that there is communication and coordination 
uh, of the processes. Um, I, I thought that let me let let me get that one uh, clearly off of the the items. Um, Acting DG would have noted many of the other um, questions from the honorable members and would be in a position to give the responsible um, managers, uh, that is DGs, to, to, to respond on this, especially those areas that talk to the processes. How does one access a, 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 an unutilized building? How do we do it when it is a department? How do we do it when it is a, 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 an individual? And therefore, DDG Makubele must be able to, together with uh, DDG Sasa Suban, because Sasa would talk to the land and uh, um, DDG Makubele would talk to the buildings, uh, the, the processes thereof. Um, let me allow acting DG to, whilst I, I, I coordinate my points, uh, it's just that this one was very clear uh, in terms of what needs to be done, because it's more of a, 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 a policy area uh, that those uh, schools would belong to provinces. Uh, DBE as well as uh, provinces uh, DPWI. So with respect to the other questions, I can come back uh, after the D acting DG uh, together with her team, uh, both from ESA and uh, uh, Public Works have responded and I will round off before uh, Handing over to back to the chair. Um, if if acting DG can start, that that will assist. Thank you, honourable chair. Chairperson, thank you very much, uh, and thanks to the deputy minister. Uh, we have taken the comments of the members of the committees uh, to heart in as far as the issues raised, and uh, we have taken the criticism on the quality of the presentation we have made. Uh, we are the first ones to accept uh, uh, what has been raised by the uh, committee members and the context that uh, we had uh, earlier in the opening remarks indicated that we will supplement the information that uh, is before the committee with what the committee says it expects. Which brings me to the next issue that the members have raised sharply. And this uh, speaks to our immovable asset register and uh, to what has been raised. We have noted uh, some comments and uh, uh, that are related thereto, uh, particularly the utilization of this uh, asset register uh, uh, in matters uh, related to disposals and also yeah. in matters of profiling the same uh, of the registers uh, so that uh, once we have profiled those assets, we are then able to make determinations as to which ones are suitable for what purpose uh, or one or the other. In this case, uh, uh, issues that have been raised, particularly to community education and training uh, institutions and uh, processes, and also whether they are related to uh, the need for provision of infrastructure to support uh, higher education and training institutions. Accordingly, uh, there has also been questions whether indeed uh, does this register exist and whether or not uh, it has been uh, utilized and we should have uh, easily relied on it to provide information to the committee. One is to first answer the question of whether the immovable Asset register exists in the affirmative to say yes, it does. It does exist. Uh, some of the comments made by members are to the effect that uh, uh, it doesn't appear that uh, it is of sound quality or complete. In the sense that comments have been made that uh, government doesn't know what it owns. 
uh, there is some degree of uh, truth uh, in uh, those statements. Uh, we are the first ones also to acknowledge that while the register do does exist, uh, there are still a, a number of issues uh, related to the register that needs to be finalized. Number one, uh, its completeness uh, is what uh, we are toiling with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. There are reasons for this. Uh, some of them may not be acceptable to members of, for obvious reasons. The time length it has taken for us at, and while we have been toiling with this issue, uh, some of the hangovers of uh, the handover of properties, the continued disputes uh, intra-governmentally, uh, in as far as this register is concerned, uh, where some, because of our concurrent function of our constitutional mandates as different spheres of government, we have found ourselves with uh, where vestings of these properties have been in other instances wrongly vested. But if you look at the mandate, uh, that's where it is. And also where clusters of government were built under apartheid, but since then the mandate have since been separated and the subdivisions and everything that needs to go in there, uh, in those uh, pieces of land and where these are vested, has always meant that uh, there are significant delays in the final vesting and determination of who owns what and therefore by right uh, title deeds and also uh, how that have an impact on the asset register in terms of where it is registered by which sphere. There are all these irritations in the system, which we are. We have a, a provincial stakeholder forum with all the land, uh, state land community, including provinces, municipalities, metros, and all the stakeholders we have been asked to look at. And there are also other complications of where state land had been uh, for a lack of a better word, uh, stolen uh, in the context that uh, other people either disposed of uh, this uh, land parcels just before 1994, uh, expeditiously so, and in other instances, uh, there is a direct uh, cases of fraud. You may have seen our efforts with the SIU at recovery of sale. So this has always impacted on the completeness of the asset register in this regard. But we also must say that uh, the same asset register from a, a profiling and utilization point of view, we have successfully uh, been utilizing it together with uh, the Department of Human Settlements and its agency, the uh, HDA, uh, the uh, a housing Development Agency, and in this regard, we had been disposing of the land necessary for resettlement of uh, communities. We have done similar, and even for our education, as we have reported, we, we had been able to utilize and profile according to the user requirements and needs, and we have been able to dispose of land in favor of higher education for the establishment of universities and uh, also other uh, institutions. So, so yes, we are utilizing it. Yes, it is not complete. Yes, it is not where it's supposed to be. And not all of it has been properly profiled uh, for us to be able on a go uh, to provide information. So therefore, even how the information is packaged in the asset register, often when the user requires uh, information packaged differently, we, we tend to take a bit of time in order for us to try and package those records uh, in a format that is preferred by the user. This normally takes time than simply a malicious compliance exercise by which we can simply just regurgitate what is on the asset register, although it will not be that useful to the user. And, and therefore we always avoid such a malicious exercise and we try to the best of our ability and within the available uh, context and I can assure you now that uh, even at this stage with the disaster management uh, being declared on, on the issue of the national disaster being declared on the issue of electricity, we had issued an instruction that all practitioners in this space must stop everything they are doing and focus on the release of land for ESCOM and for distribution of uh, power lines and for servitudes to be registered and for purposes of expropriation of where the land is in other hands and which is required for this purpose. So you, you would imagine that the capacity itself around our registry and in terms of uh, the 
management of uh, what requests come on hand also face competing priorities in terms of uh, what could be achieved at a go. In the long term, our viewpoint, and as we have already commenced that process, is to digitize this uh, asset register, uh, fully digitize it uh, from uh, the simple system now that registers uh, assets and that's simply put there, but you can do a lot of data mining on it and you can't really uh, profile your register and your assets in a manner that uh, by a click of a button and by a proper synthesis, you can then ask for the register to give you a specific things you want. Uh, for instance, if I was to say to the register, give me all properties uh, of this uh, hectare or of this size uh, in proximity to this specific drop-in, uh, the register is unable to do that at this stage. It, it will not be able to give us what uh, we, are, we are requesting and therefore the need for us to digitize this register. And I think that work has commenced as I've indicated. And uh, it is a humongous project considering that we've got uh, in excess of 90,000 entries on this asset register. That uh, tells you the story of uh, the humongous task ahead. But it is a task that we should have uh, long commenced with. We regret that we are where we are, but we, we are now dedicated at uh, getting it right and doing it uh, in such a manner that we will be better responsive uh, in the future in as far as this is concerned. Chair, you members also asked uh, that uh, we do not have a collective list of all the requests that have been coming our way. Uh, we must ask them to indicate that the majority of the requests that uh, have been coming our way, for us, they are referrals and it's what we have been sending to those requests to other departments. For instance, where we have seen that, and that is why our deputy minister from the onset uh, indicated to the committee members to say that uh, it will be important for us as the things that are being requested, some of them engage and require provincial engagement and require our counterparts uh, in provinces and in other instances by our sister departments. For instance, we have long devolved uh, schools and hospitals and all of that to provinces and even more important to uh, the education department and the health department. And even if we were to talk only to DPWI in provinces, uh, we would still not necessarily be assisted from that context if we do, do not uh, engage the sister departments as well uh, in the state land community uh, forums and uh, that we get to ensure that the, where those requests have been made and where the referrals have been made that uh, also the degree and power of follow-up becomes quite important. I'm, I'm saying so because one of the members, uh, actually two, had raised the matter of what then had become our role after we had uh, done the referrals or have either requested additional information. Did we simply fold our arms and, and sit on our laurels and say, we will wait until the uh, thing come? We have had the chairperson's directive that we've got to be on uh, tenter hooks and we've got to be on our toes and that we've got to uh, add impetus to our work in this regard in, in being much more proactive and not just reactive by waiting for the request to be submitted. Uh, this is a matter we have now taken to heart. We will uh, pursue it with such activism as the chair directors to do so. The other issue that has been raised was, uh, what are the challenges uh, with us repurposing this uh, uh, the infrastructure to be suitable for DHET and its needs. And uh, we, we, I think another member came back and indicated that we had earlier uh, come and we had earlier indicated that we were struggling with uh, several issues, issues of rezoning, of title deeds, uh, synchronization of financing, land claims uh, that have been lodged against some of the properties. And of course, uh, the issues of bylaws and uh, site clearances. Well, were, were the key issues uh, which we were toiling with. We are still toiling with uh, some of them. Uh, and uh, of course, I think everybody knows that the challenges with the capacity of our municipalities. And in this regard, for the prioritized uh, projects, uh, in this regard, we have been actively engaging with municipalities. We have even been sending our own town planners to municipalities. We have even been doing draft resolutions for councils to be able to with ease to pass what uh, is being required. And uh, we 
we we we we are increasing our capacity in this space uh, to be much more supportive so that we deal with this matters uh, as quickly as it is possible but one of the key things that relates the uh, remains a challenge is the active disputes in the system that we are dealing with because they tend to delay even our lodgement with municipalities and even uh, the provisions of title deeds and even of finalization of site clearances so that the procurement instructions could be issued for for repurposing to actually okay uh, all of this uh, one may indicate that they sound like all government, but yes, well, they are all government. Uh, and while yes, members uh, indicate the coherence of uh, the system of governance, in reality, uh, the interdependencies that are there between us uh, and other uh, spheres of government, and also even more importantly, uh, where we are dependent on other uh, people to do other things for us, uh, this has tended to be quite a significant uh, a challenge, particularly where you see that uh, we have now pushing for the new Expropriation Act, uh, in which case we would be in a better position to do things a bit more faster and in resolving some of the disputes uh, that have dogged the system for more than 20 years uh, to be able to do, to do so. We hear the chair uh, to say that uh, resolve the disputes and have close out uh, on these issues don't allow them to drag on. We 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 agree, and uh, that has been the chair's observation uh, spot on. That has been the challenge with the system that it has docked us for far too long. We are ourselves revising the guidelines for the vesting processes and for dispute resolution with a viewpoint of uh, emphasizing on the centrality of national government, that all land that remains in dispute at some stage must be vested. We believe that it must be vested in national government and should there be opposition or or appeals or uh, representations as to why the land must be devolved to a province or to a municipality that that then be handled as a basis of uh, changes to the register than leaving significant amount of properties unaccounted for and significant amount of properties that uh, are not being included in the register because of ongoing disputes. Chairperson, one of the other issues that have been raised uh, in this regard was uh, why should uh, we allow other departments, in this case DHEP, to lease land from another department, meaning ourselves? I think that the uh, how the system is designed to work and how it has always worked has always been that uh, the centrality of uh, the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure as the custodian of all immovable property of the state, save for where such have been devolved to other departments and such transference have been lodged and custodianship transferred. But uh, that has been the default position. So we remain a default position and from an accounting point of view, uh, uh, implored by the law, Giyama in this case, and uh, also the accounting standard boards have since determined that uh, uh, the accountability be done in that way and also because uh, the PFMA is binding on all of us. There has not been exceptions in this regard around the utilization. The PFMA still requires of us uh, to put out property on market-related costs. We have we are we have to do a process by which we apply on a case-by-case -case basis to the Treasury to allow us to deviate where we have to give land out gratis to another government agency or to another department. But uh, we are also cognizant that the system is designed that once the properties are vested in our names, we have to honor the obligations to the municipalities where these uh, uh, properties are located. We have to uh, pay for utilities and related aspects. And we work on a basis of a cost recovery model where we then bill uh, in return the departments to then pay us uh, in return for this. This model, uh, it's a model that uh, even in our own portfolio committee members have previously noted that it doesn't work that well. We we agree with the committee members and we also agree with the observations of the uh, portfolio committee on jihad uh, that we we ought to have a rethink about this and the discussions have began with the treasury around this. And uh, you may have also seen that even in the e, &E allocation, the treasury again uh, we believe they are kicking the can down the road because we have asked them 
in essence, uh, to relook at the model and to agree with us that uh, we, we must uh, tweak and change uh, things to be able to work faster and that we don't have to come through them all the time. If we agree to a default position, that where we have to transfer to another state organ, there's no need for us on a case-by-case -case basis to be applying that the general principle must apply and that uh, such a, a custodial transfer could happen quite quicker and or possibly that where we have to provide uh, such gratis that we do not have to await uh, such uh, approvals in advance. So, so, so I'm just raising this because I believe that the observations of members are consistent with what we ourselves are trying to correct uh, in this regard. Uh, there was a question about why we should not use houses that are empty and that are currently being vandalized. Uh, we, we think that in our approach uh, of the 6,000 properties, we are not excluding anything. And the houses are also in there. And where they are found suitable or they are required, uh, I mean, even if it is not for student accommodation, if, for instance, it's a house uh, that is designated for a vice chancellor or whoever, the registrar of would be... Uh, campus and so on, we are prepared. And I think we are eager to ensure that where the needs are, are aligned to any of our properties, that we are able to do the same and provide that. On the issue of greening of buildings, uh, that too, uh, in terms of our approval of uh, the new policy around greening, and that has been uh, agreed to, and that has accepted the strategy by cabinet, we, we are in full force now. Uh, the requirements now, none of what we are approving and that is going out to tender. And the same goes for ESA and its uh, processes uh, that uh, all of them are, are indeed in compliance with green buildings. But even more importantly, as Honorable Hicklin has uh, been raising this matter consistently, they are now supposed to also meet the AGRIMA SA standards uh, uh, in this regard and that we are taking further in, in this manner. On the issue of uh, uh, what was raised about the user asset management plans and whether there is one between us and higher education, yes, indeed, higher education has submitted a user asset management plan. Uh, once more, we are prepared to also share this copy of this plan with uh, Honorable Hicklin. And, and what we tend to see, uh, I think what we can agree with her on, is about the completeness of this user asset management plan. Other than what the departments are telling us what they have and what they require from us, are there additional requests along the way in the year of validity of what has been submitted as the user asset management? Yes, we do find that. And we always augment for that because uh, whilst the plans are in place, uh, they are not cast in stones and they are allowed to be amended. Uh, and uh, we are always uh, resubmitting to the Treasury and asking for reapproval once uh, the amendments have been made. We do get uh, supplementary letters. We do get supplementary requests and additional things other than what is concerned, contained in the user asset management plan. Our attitude has always been to look at what else is being requested other than what is contained in the user asset management plan. Of course, if, for instance, in the case of DHET, the, the request was to say, uh, provide us with an additional building on an existing campus, we think we can easily accommodate that, but uh, within the existing time frame of the validity period of the same user asset management plan. But of course, it will be a totally different ball game if when the asset user management plan has been submitted, then we get a request for a building of a totally new campus or for a disposal of land, uh, uh, the size of which is more than a hectare or whatever, then it, it's, it's a bigger ball game that should have indeed uh, been included in the user asset management plan in the first instance. And in, in those instances, uh, we tend to then have these sessions uh, with uh, the user departments to really understand where they come from and so on. You, 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 we have also been asked about our relationship with this and I don't think it's something we need to bypass. Yes, we must ac admit that um, we have a, res a officials responsible from both sides. On our side from the uh, key account management and uh, uh, people who are designated specifically to look at the DHEAD portfolio. And even on the side of DHAT, we have uh, officials, which uh, their DG, Dr. Gosinati, she had written to us to say, these are the designated officials to work with. 
uh, have they been effective in dealing with all methods, including the methods raised here? I think we should acknowledge that it could have been better. And I'm, I, I wish to benchmark uh, the relationship with what we are now doing, uh, both with ESCOM as an example through energy, and also with what we have been doing with uh, the Housing Development Agency uh, with uh, human settlements. And I think if uh, those are the good models we are working around and we see the quicker turnaround and we see what we are able to do with the coherence of uh, relationship, I think we could do a lot better uh, in as far as DHAT is concerned. And I think uh, we shouldn't uh, belabor the point. We must accept the criticism uh, for what it is and uh, uh, mend our own ways. Uh, hear out the chair what she has said about the impetus and do exactly that. And uh, that uh, I should undertake from my side uh, to initiate the process with Dr. CC to beef up uh, the process and the officials and to ensure that we monitor the uh, collaboration and uh, how often the working teams do meet to also interrogate the reports and to see that they are complete in as far as covering all matters, including CET, as the committee has raised and pointed out sharply as what is missing. Uh, I'm going to request, Chair, with your indulgence, that uh, perhaps I allow my colleagues uh, in ESA to respond to the matter that has been raised about the, the uh, cost units and cost uh, for building uh, this in order for us to meet the targets of 2030. Uh, on 300,000 beds. And I'm also going to request that my colleagues in DPWI, particularly DDG Suban, uh, to speak a lot on uh, the processes that are necessary to follow for individuals or other government departments to access government property and uh, to consider what it could be repurposed and be used for and what processes and timelines are we looking at. And this they must answer in relation also to the question that was raised around the timelines it takes from uh, planning to implementation. I would ask you to address those uh, uh, two matters and for us to admit that the relationship could have been better and that uh, we should have been more proactive in, in following up and in sourcing information that is missing from our side. Uh, with that, Chair, I would uh, wish to end there and uh, to request that the two colleagues uh, help with that in part of their answers. Thank you. They can go ahead. Isa Maneze or Alvino. Uh, apologies, uh, DG. Struggling to connect. Um, yeah. Um, just on the on the planning component, um, just to, to, to add maybe to say that usually after the feasibility is completed, it can take up to 12 to 18 months uh, for the project to be uh, constructed and um, and and basically completed. And that in, that needs to make sure that obviously all the financing requirements is, are also met when it comes to, to that processes. On the um, implementation of the SHIP program, I think it will be best for um, DHET to actually respond on the status and, and where we are since uh, they are the project sponsor and they do provide us with the, the, the updates on the on the quarterly reports as well. And as mentioned in the in the chat as well, as well by Mr. Mlambu, that um, the strategy is in the final stages um, at the moment. So we hope to get uh, a status update on that as well. Uh, thank you, Akindiju. Uh, Egton, did you, who else is coming in? Um, thank you, Chairperson. It's myself, uh, Sasa Subin. In terms of the process um, for a land request, um, the request would be that we would need um, the needs assessment. Uh, we would need the extent of uh, the, the, the development. Um, we would need the, 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 the purpose required for the development. This would then support the feasibility study that we're undertaking. With the feasibility, we also do evaluation. Um, this, these are requirements in terms, like DG mentioned, in terms of uh, uh, PFMA processes, uh, et cetera. 
um, then we we would uh, then uh, access and and get the necessary approvals uh, for the property uh, from uh, the minister. Um, for example, I just want to mention. Okay, but I'll come back to that. Uh, then we go to national treasury, especially if the um, the disposal is for gratis. We need to then link to the the motivation and the purposes that is coming through from the requesting department, and build the case to national treasury as to uh, why we 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 are purporting a gratis uh, disposal, and this is linked to treasury regulations uh, twenty one point three. Um, so that is the process uh, that that we 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 follow in that regard. The the longest uh, process uh, period here is mainly on the feasibility because the feasibility it will take anything from uh, three to four months because we would have to assess the land linked to the requirements, the land linked to also the environmental considerations uh, of that parcel of land. Um, the, the link to also the planned developments um, in the particular area as required by Spluma, for example. Um, we also at this particular stage also link it to the IDPs, et cetera, of the municipality. So there's detailed work that we undertake in this regard. Um, if I come to the, the buildings, um, the uh, once again, we would require uh, Sorry, uh, Chairperson, if I may just go back to the land, I just wanted to make one point. Now, um, we, we do, and as DG has indicated, we do have uh, the land parcels available on the asset register. But the land parcels, they, they range from any um, uh, extent from one hectare for these portions of lands to 500 hectares. So we need to then superimpose the requirements so then we can link the requirement to the land parcel and then allocate the land accordingly uh, to, to, to what is required uh, uh, for, the, for the development. So that we, we also responsible in the way we allocating the land parcel. Um, and then we can also make a determination if the land parcel is adequate or inadequate, et cetera. Okay, thank you. I'm going to come then to the buildings. Once again, we would need the, the, the needs assessment so that we can link it to the vacant building that is available. Then we undertake a, 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 a physical inspection, and this is normally done jointly with the user department. We assess the condition of the building, but not only that, we also have to assess suitability and viability in terms of whether this building will actually suit the needs in this particular case of uh, CET or student accommodation. Uh, for, for, for rural campuses, et cetera. So that would have to be assessed jointly. And then uh, both parties will provide a report uh, based on the, the, the suitability. Then if the most of the buildings that are vacant, unfortunately, are not in good condition, then that is why some of them are even condemned. And that is why they are mainly vacant. And we, we're talking across with residential properties in excess of 957 properties that are currently counted as vacant. Um, so then we would also then have to do a costing in terms of uh, what refurbishments and upgrades will cost. And it's also then once again linked to the plans and the requirement because those will also have to be costed into. If all is in agreement, then we will submit for the relevant approvals. Thank you, Chairperson. DG, I'll hand back to you. Um, may, maybe I should come in, Chair. Given that uh, I now note um, that most of the technical uh, and, and process questions have been uh, responded to, there has been a, a question on how long, um, why, or oh, why, let, let me rather rephrase it to say why. Um, would the minister not uh, approve a, 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 a request? Um, 
that that has been partly uh, responded to, but I must uh, hasten to add that uh, we have a general rule uh, that where a memo that would be making requests uh, from the once they reach the stage of the ministry, uh, with me uh, they 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 don't a a a memo should not exceed three days without approval. And we try and uh, facilitate most of our approvals um, within a week at least. Where a memo is, is delayed that much, then we, we need to check what, what has happened uh, to it. Because at times they will say, the originator will say it's en route to minister. But you may find that it got delayed uh, between the, the administrative offices. So we would have to check um, specifically on this one, uh, what, why, why would it uh, be delayed? Um, and, and therefore, as part of the enhancement that will be brought to the committee uh, in terms of information, that will also be clearly indicated what would have been the cause of, of that delay. But ordinarily, especially those programs and projects that seek to enhance people's livelihoods, and uh, the quality of life, uh, especially in key uh, areas of uh, apex uh, areas, we, we tend to prioritize them because of the understanding of what it means to, to have them um, taking place uh, within the, the required uh, timelines. But also, Chair, uh, what has come out in the deliberations is that there has been a poor communication and poor coordination between the two departments that we cannot run away from. And um, especially with respect to the area of uh, CEM and to some extent uh, TVET uh, uh, colleges. And uh, I, this I am saying is also illustrated. You have uh, shared with the, with the committee uh, some statistics on the number of requests that were made uh, by various provinces uh, with respect to CETs, um, which some have not been responded to, some have uh, been approved, some not approved. And I, I do want to say, those who would not be approved would be the reasons that uh, Sasa has uh, just raised. Some, uh, the, the suitability or the zoning or whatever else would uh, cause uh, or, or impact on such a, a, an approval uh, negative. But I would want to make a request, Honorable Chair, that uh, if you, if, if with your permission, you could share with me that uh, breakdown, um, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm requesting it, because I would want us to quickly deal with this one uh, as urgently as we possibly can. We had taken a decision between myself and minister that we would share provinces for better coordination again and to ease um, communication. Uh, for example, I noted that with Pumalanga, you were saying is three and one. And I was in Pumalanga last Friday. Uh, had I had that information, I would have been able to follow up on what, what, what other problems would have been experienced in that project. So if, if, if Chair, you can share that particular detail um, with us so that we, we are able to, as we move around the provinces, 
also uh, assist in resolving some of the bottlenecks uh, that we may not have been aware of. Um, but lastly, I would uh, emphasize the need for, to, for us to improve this coordination, uh, the, the, this need. I'm happy that uh, Acting DG is taking responsibility to initiate the process because I had noted that, yes, we agree that this team must be reignited, but I, 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 I had this feeling that if we leave it to the two teams that have failed to meet in the first place, it will never take place. And therefore, uh, acting DG taking responsibility, I, I highly appreciate that because now we will know who to, to uh, deal with uh, when that does not happen. Um, but also I agree to say, yes, the, the other details that are needed, let us uh, uh, ensure that we work on them and uh, we bring to the committee a, uh, within the timelines that the committee would have determined. Um, but let me once again thank uh, the spirit and uh, the, the, the manner of raising the matters. Um, we, we, have, we have not been paying that much focus on, especially uh, we, we, in the area of CET. I must say with student accommodation, uh, being uh, allocated to ESA, there has been quite an, an engagement. Uh, there has been sharing of information and there has been strategizing together. But in some of the areas that require the, the part of the public works uh, as a department, we, we, we have not been that much focused and commit to say that um, um, this, we take it as a, 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 a boost or a kickoff of that coordination and cooperation that we'd want to see uh, in, in strengthening our coordination. Uh, let me thank the opportunity once more, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister. Um, do you have uh, any closing remarks from yourselves? Uh, all the DDGs, uh, are you fine? Yeah, no, thanks, thanks, Honorable Chair. It's uh, DDG Zoom, yeah. Um, I think maybe just as a way of responding, I think it's one of the questions that you raised and was raised by um, a number of uh, other members um, in relation to the delays. I think there was a case, a case in point is the Kharsibande issue. Um, we have engaged the institution because this matter was not brought to the uh, department per se, uh, but was dealt with at an institutional level uh, where they appointed a legal team that was handling this matter. Uh, they've given feedback to say the, the documents that were outstanding, they were outstanding from their lawyers um, with regards to some government gazette that they needed to deal with, but they have now uh, made a submission uh, to the college, which the college will then submit uh, to DPWI uh, before the 10th of March. So that, that's, the, that's the update that we have received. Uh, in that particular re regard. But Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, I think we we agree, and Honorable DM and the Acting DG, that indeed we do need to work much closer uh, as the two departments uh, in ensuring that we are able to deal with these matters. And we take note of the recommendations that have been made uh, by the committee to say, let's try and consolidate and make sure that we, we are able to set up some kind of a, a, a strategic uh, plan that we put together uh, in ensuring that we, we, we close this matter. Indeed, there is a high demand from our side. Uh, and, and, and I think uh, we just need to look 
from the, the from DPW side in terms of the supply, uh, whether we can be able to 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 find each other in that regard. And I think uh, working together can actually make our life much easier uh, for both departments. But from our side, I think there's a much greater need in, in regards to student accommodation, but also just generally the infrastructure for teaching and learning, which we can easily you know, tap in those uh, 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 buildings that are either underutilized or maybe not not utilized at all, uh, especially in the major cities. And it could be a strategy as well for the cities to ensure that uh, we 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 eradicate you know uh, the this uh, abuse of the properties within the cities. And we can see as well that wherever we have students, it actually uh, generate some kind of economic hive in that area, uh, but students will want to be in a much safer space um, than than what what it currently is. And I think there was a document that was circulating recently about the properties within the uh, inner city of Jobek, and if one could imagine turning that, those properties into uh, student cities. Uh, it can actually turn that place around, and and we do appreciate the opportunity. And thanks to the acting DG uh, for opening up for these engagements. And we would also convey the same message to our DG as well in in relation to this. And uh, thank you very much, honourable chair and honourable members. Well, thank you very much, uh, DG Zungu. Is that? Uh... I'm assuming you are leading the delegation of higher education. So you're summing up everything for everyone. Uh, unless if my colleagues, uh, uh, because we, we, we did not have a leader per se, but uh, I, 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 I hope that uh, I'm not uh, speaking on behalf of my colleagues, if they did a Fuchani, because she's the one that has been uh, affected the most also in this in this in this area. I don't know if she wants to say something. Uh, thank thank you, Honorable Chair. Okay, no, um, uh, she has raised the hand. Uh, did you for Chani? Thank you very much, um, Honorable Chair. Um, I I I am going to be very brief, but I do need to provide clarity on some of the questions that have been asked. Uh, first, I want to thank the Honorable Deputy Minister and the Honorable um, Members, including the Chair, in terms of uh, the support that has been pledged in relation to assisting community colleges. In, in response to some of the questions that have been, that have been asked, um, Honorable um, Siwisa had asked uh, in terms of where this uh, 1 billion will be uh, this one billion rand will be spent in terms of the building of centers related to the rationalization and merging of schools, whether it is urban or rural. I do need to indicate that the, the merged schools are not only in rural areas, so you will find that rationalization and merging has happened also in your in your in your urban areas. An example would be some of the schools I know in in the Western Cape and certainly some schools in in Tanzania in Tanzania as well. There were a few questions asked by Honorable Machesi, and I'm going to summarize the responses in, in relation to the questions that have been asked. In particular, she wanted to know what model will be used. But also, I want to start by indicating that in terms of the questions asked that this one billion, it may seem like a lot of money, but it is not in a lot of money in terms of the infrastructure that is required for the centers. At the moment, we are going to start with one center per, per province or per college. That means that in the end, in terms of the budget of this 1 billion, we are going to have nine centers that will be built. If you take that into consideration and look at the total number of community college centers, which are sitting at 1,791, that does not even begin to scratch the surface. So what this means is that we still need the, the vacant uh, facilities, may not necessarily be schools, but obviously we are targeting schools first, for for occupation by the rest of the centers which are which are in majority indeed uh, the the concerns that have been raised particularly by honorable machesi and others are around the issue of cost 
and not just building from scratch uh, because one wants to build and have something that is new. The determination will be based on the most cost effective manner in which to build a center. The criteria is quite wide and, 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 and the range is, is we, have a, we have a criteria in terms of, of the centers. I must indicate that at the core of the criteria is the teaching and learning and training that must take place. Of course, the issue of cost will be part of the criteria and the population or the potential student numbers that can be accommodated in the center. We are not only looking at the numbers to be accommodated today or tomorrow, but we are looking at the, the challenge of needs that we have in the country. Those are not in education, the, those are not in employment, education, or training. So a center that is built must be built, yes, for, for the current use, but also for the future use. And also in relation of the program offerings. The question also that was asked is what programs will be offered here? These will be community-based and, of course, based in terms of the needs of the economy within the immediate and surrounding community. And, of course, looking at the potential changes as we know that how things are changing in, in, in not only in our country, but also in the world. So there, there are a number of factors that will be taken into, into account, including um, ICT labs, including workshops that, that, would, that would be required and so forth. Again, looking at the most cost, cost effective uh, areas for building these centers. I, I'll give an example already. In the Western Cape, our Western Cape Community College is already occupying a school. They're occupying that school fully. And they have identified that as a center, as a place where they would like to build their center. So it would be in that case, working on something that is already existing. But where we would need help is the issue of ownership in terms of that school that has been, uh, that is currently occupied by the Western Cape. Mpumalanga uh, Community College has already identified a site and they do have the site and they're owning, the, they owning the site. It was given to the province. KwaZulu Natal has already been um, given a site by the Ingonyama Trust. And that is the site that they have identified for 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 building for building of, of of the center so we are looking at various modalities at the center of these modalities cost of of building the center being a priority a suitability for program offerings and in terms of also the needs in terms of those programs that 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 would be that would be offered there was a question again asked by honorable machesi in terms of what will these encompass the, the skills needs of that area, certainly that, that, will, that will encompass that as well. Honorable Graham Marais had indicated that we need to call, collaborate with DBE and rather use the money to upgrade the dilapidated schools and share the services with the schools. Um, so you, have, you, you still have the community college within that school and use the money to, to, to remodel or renovate that school. I need to indicate, um, Honorable Graham Marais, that current experience that we have of the 96% of our centers that are occupying uh, schools and sharing with schools is that the environment is not conducive for community colleges, particularly when you take into consideration that our community colleges do not only offer academic programs, but they also offer skills, occupational and non-formal programs that require certain equipment, that require certain workshops, and that is not in use in your current mainstream schools. And the majority of the schools that are used by our community colleges centers are actually primary schools, because most of your high schools indicate that their programs run until very late in the day, because of extramural activities, unlike your primary schools where the majority of extramural activities are incorporated within the school hours, and therefore the primary schools vacate the schools earlier in the day compared to your high schools. There's also an unspoken risk here, which we never talk about, where we have a community college operating in a particularly in a primary school, the, the risk of combining very, very young children with adults in, in the same in the same space with no with no segregation. And, and this is a risk uh, to both uh, institutional types, but mainly a risk 
to the young uh, primary primary school school children. So we need we need to bear that in mind. There is a reason why the Department of Basic Education developed and implemented a new policy of the separation of the grades in terms of the schools to make sure that you keep young children together and you separate them from 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 teenagers. And, and and the older and the older children and if we if we if we continue and and to to combine uh, adults in in particular for community colleges with very young children who are in primary school this goes against even the policies of this government on of education in particular lastly on the same recommendation made by, by Honorable Graham Marais, is that these departments are two different departments with, with different um, education mandates and certainly different uh, budgets that, that we need to, to take into, into consideration. My last comment through you, Honorable Chair, is on the, on the recommendations that have been made by Honorable Mananiso, that we must be careful and not bite more than what we can chew Indeed, we are very much aware of this. And as a result, this one billion budget that we are talking about, we have spread it over the next three years for the completion of this program. In the first financial year, which is starting soon on the 1st of April, we are targeting to start by building, by building four, four centers. In closing, Honorable Chair, Honorable Deputy Minister, and Honorable Members and colleagues present, I, I want to reiterate the point that uh, in spite of this one billion and the building of centers, that building of centers will incorporate completely new, will, will incorporate remodeling using existing facilities and renovation. Will, and, and, but most importantly, what I wish we can take out of this meeting in the context of what has been discussed today is that these new centers that are going to be built are only nine. Even after the three year period, we are starting with four in the first year, but at the end of the 1 billion, we are only talking about nine centers against 1,791 centers that are for our community colleges. Therefore, we do need the buildings and the facilities for the rest of the centers that those facilities that can be offered or provided through the Department of Public Works. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Thanks very much, um, DDG Fuchane. Um, as the Chair of uh, the Portfolio Committee on uh, Public Works and Infrastructure, still on the platform. Or it's my network, or oh, I don't know, I can't see here. Wanted to give an opportunity to just make a closing from their side. Uh, let me see. Okay, she's she's not on the platform. Uh, colleagues, let me take this opportunity uh, to to thank uh, you, the deputy minister. Um, for being with us and um, uh, taking the punches uh, from members. I think um, it's understandable why would uh, members uh, really be, uh, uh, you know, throwing punches like that. I mean, the issue of student accommodation in this country is a thorny issue currently. Uh, the issue of uh, the safety of our students as well, uh, the only issue. Um, so it's understandable why would members uh, uh, throw punches uh, the way they did. If indeed uh, it may have come out as if uh, members were attacking, uh, want to apologize, that was not the, the purpose. The frustration that comes with uh, the system that moves slowly sometimes in uh, responding to the challenges uh, faced by our people on the ground. Um, um, as part of what we have resolved here, is that one, uh, both departments uh, should coordinate themselves better. Um, they must meet often. Uh, and um, 
We also want to make a suggestion that uh, maybe uh, they must, the two departments must speak uh, immediately as uh, this issue of student accommodation, honestly, is, uh, is very serious. Uh, and maybe within uh, 21 uh, working days, three weeks, uh, they send to uh, the both committees a program uh, that will uh, help us resolve this issue of uh, student um, accommodation. Uh, we're also asking the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, uh, uh, that the uh, that uh, let's improve. Uh, I know you're saying it's work in progress, but let's expedite that process quicker. Uh, of uh, making sure that uh, the asset registry there uh, better responds to uh, these issues. Um, uh, so let's digitize and modernize, uh, you know, uh, the systems there so that uh, when we require information or the portfolio committee on public works requ requires information about certain buildings, uh, you are able to respond to them. Even though they might give you eight days, you can respond to them in eight hours uh, because that information uh, will be at the, at the click of a button. We also want to uh, um, make a result that uh, uh, we, will, we will call both departments uh, again um, probably at the beginning of uh, the next term. Uh, obviously, the two portfolio committees will then have to liaise with one another so that we identify a suitable date uh, for us to come back and um, uh, uh, get uh, some information uh, that members would have said they would have expected to get uh, that, were, that was not there. Uh, what is clear uh, is that. Uh, uh, if better collaborations, uh, you know, do take place between different departments, uh, we might achieve uh, better than we are achieving currently. And we must uh, um, ask the two departments to really um, uh, consider working together, and maybe with other departments of as well of uh, human settlements with uh, the land that you may have. Uh, and other departments as well of health, uh, maybe for, uh, you know, health facilities and all of that. Um, so Department of Public Works is extremely central in uh, helping us resolve some of our immediate challenges that uh, we have uh, right now. Um, I, would, I do not want to take uh, too long. Um, I want to thank you for attending the meeting, uh, uh, Deputy Minister, act, acting DDG. Uh, the DDGs were all here from both departments, honorable members from all departments, uh, all officials, uh, the advisors of ministers who may have been present. Uh, we really uh, appreciate uh, you making time to be with us uh, this morning. It's been a uh, three hour, 30 minutes. Um, uh, of a boxing match, punches thrown uh, uh, to and fro. Uh, but we really appreciate it. It's in the best interest uh, of making sure that our our, our communities uh, benefit here. So this part of our meeting ends here. Uh, I'm going to um, allow uh, com uh, colleagues from uh, the uh, Department of um, uh, Deputy Minister, your 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 whole team uh, to exit the meeting, uh, and officials of uh, uh, Department of Higher Education as well, uh, and also members of uh, the Portfolio Committee on uh, uh, Public Works. Uh, will only remain with uh, uh, members of uh, the Portfolio Committee on Higher Education so that uh, we are able to deal with our own uh, in-house issues. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, this meeting, this part of the meeting uh, is urgent. Thank you, Chair. Enjoy the remainder of your day.
शप शप हम लोग से Thirtieth of November, second of December, um, including um, one set for this year, which is the fifteenth of uh, February. Uh, members, the the minutes were sent to yourselves. Do we have um, any board who wants to do corrections on uh, uh, all sets of minutes? Um, yeah, please say uh, if you want to do corrections, uh, just raise your hand or you can just speak. Uh, or in the absence of uh, corrections, oh, why is my internet unstable? In the absence of corrections, uh, can I get anybody to move for the adoption of uh, all sorts of minutes? And am I audible? Um, thank you, Chair. You are audible, but I, I've just noted that we lost some few members, meaning that at this very moment okay. we don't form a quorum. Okay, let me see. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, no, it's fine. Uh, I just saw that now. Um, uh, uh, I think let's just close the meeting and then we'll refer the minutes back to Friday. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Uh, there's a sitting today uh, of parliament at, uh, at 3 p.m. Uh, see you then, goodbye. Bye-bye, thank you.